Okay, I haven't been on live here in a while, so I thought I would do a large scene. This is going to be a seven and a half by 10 inch. I'm giving myself an inch border around this so that I have room to um, uh, mat it off when I'm done. I always make the mistake of kind of working full size at eight and a half by 11, and uh, I have nowhere to go because I don't have like larger pieces of paper to um, mat things off, you know, for presentation purposes. So um, one of the things that came up in a video, uh, it's probably been two weeks by now or something like that, was um, using the beaver dams, and I haven't used that in a while, or dam, I should say. Hello, Froggy Fresh, how are you? Um, and I thought I would like to do that beaver dam. So we're going to do the beaver dams. Hello, Bobby. How are you guys today? Hope you had a nice week getting ready for, and hope you're ready for a nice weekend going forward. Hello, Beth. Good to see you all. Thanks, uh, for everyone for checking out the vid. Um, even though <laughs> it's only been like I don't know, like a week and a half or something like that. I feel really rusty at this now. It, it feels like whenever I haven't been on uh, doing whatever, a video or something like that, one, like two days feels like a week and like a week feels like two months. So not afraid of color genie. Good to see you all. All right, so I'm working large here. I, I was mentioning I was working at seven and a half by 10, okay? And I'm giving myself an inch to throw on, you know, a little bit of a, a mat around this and, uh, you know, so I can mount this on a eight and a half by 11, you know, border when done here. And I, the, the Beaver Lodge is fairly large. I have done um, standard card size pieces where this really fills up the frame, whether you're going landscape or, you know, a portrait on this. But I thought we would go big. Um, I want to do... Um, uh, a lot of my, I haven't used my paint pens in a while, and I love using these big paint pens with fall scenes because I like that kind of shimmering color in, um, you know, autumn leaves or something, or just deciduous trees in general. You can do this for um, spring as well, and you can use greens and things like that, but I really wanted to use my oranges and reds and greens and all that good stuff where it looks kind of crazy while I'm doing it, but it all comes together with the white um, uh, pigment ink at the end. It saves me. <laughs> uh, gold on gold. You did, huh? That is cool. How did that work for you, Froggy Fresh? Did uh, did the did how did that work with the heating of the um, the gold? Oh, yeah, did you work uh, the gold foil or more of the um, kind of the gold? Um, uh, iridescent types of papers or was it the gold iridescent like the star dream on gold foil reflective gold foil or was it gold foil over gold foil and how did that work out with the embossing with the heating there hello Cheryl okay so uh, let's see let me just get started here I'll kind of work as you guys are chatting there um, I tried my first um, uh, stencil <laughs> <laughs> uh, what was it yesterday or is it two days ago the paper was a pain uh oh in the uh oh that's what i was wondering about um how that worked out with the heat embossing you got to really be careful about that heat embossing with the foils any kind of those um metallic types of things not enough you're not going to get um enough heat for the um for the embossing but then um, too much, and you start getting that kind of that change, that rainbowing, rainbowing happening, and as well as the um, uh, the puckering, melting with way too much, and then definitely the warping of the surfaces like that. So I don't know. People mentioned uh, heating from the back, so I, I usually do it both sides. Uh, hello, Kay. Good to see you. Thanks for joining in. I've been wanting to go uh, get on a live here for a, uh, several times, but I've just been, um, I don't know, one thing came up or after another for a while there, and I just didn't 
get the time. Okay, so I'm going to be building up a little of these side shores here. I thought these would be perfect for this application. We're going to be using a lot of trees in here, so I'm not going to be worried about kind of overlapping. There's going to be a lot of stuff overlapping everything in this thing, I think. <laughs> uh, I was trying to figure it out before I started this in terms of the whole composition. I, I thought, ah, let's just, let's just start off here. Okay, so, um, let's see. I was doing that template, or uh, the stencil, uh, the other day, and, um, you know, with that type of thing, there's, um, I mean, you can go pretty intricate with those, but it seems like it's, um, I don't know, as far as the basic usages go with Stampscape stuff, it seems like it's kind of more of a, you know, it, things look really elegant in kind of a minimal type of, um, application of stamps. You're not going to use 20 stamps with them, you know, N not on like a court half page scene or something like that. So um, kind of building this up here. It's like a different mindset, even though I just did that like one of those, you know. Okay, so I'm building the shoreline up here. I'm going to have like other trees over this way. I'm kind of creating this thing. If you kind of create these diagonals within a composition, it kind of creates a little bit of extra kind of visual movement and dynamics. Not that you want that in every scene. Sometimes you want a more static and calm and things like that. But, you know, um, when people look at a scene or just any type of composition, could be any poster or anything like that, um, you know, there's kind of a visual path that people take and not that it's going to be exhausting or anything like that. But um, I want kind of a passageway built up through here. So there's going to be trees down here. Here, I'll give you kind of a, the gist of it. So some trees going down this way. So we're creating a little bit of a passageway, right? And then I'll put some plants, some of these trees over on this side. So you're kind of going around here and then up. And then I thought I'd have some background mountains in here, but I thought I would check out and see what this looked like before I kind of got around to that. It was the Tim Holtz metallic foil paper. It's great to stamp on because it holds the ink. Not good for heat embossing, huh? Well, I tell you what, I don't know if any of those foils are really ideal for embossing, but um, they can be pretty cool with that embossed on there. But yeah, uh, I guess different types of foils would probably have um, kind of a higher um, heat tolerance, maybe. What do they call it? Like when you're cooking, it's like flashpoint, right? So you can get certain ones hotter than others. And um, I'm guessing, I'm only kind of comparing uh, the Recollections foils, and then that real silvery mirrored gold one that I use um, from Craft Boutique. Um, those two together. The cheaper one works uh, better for embossing. It's, I don't know, it's just thinner, and it, there's less plastic uh, coating, and it, there's less bowing going on. Um, yeah. Doing anything for my birthday. Um, <laughs> balloons, maybe. A, a scene with balloons. And let's see. For my birthday this year, there would have to be a hundred of them this year. <laughs> oh, no plans. Uh, you know, my wife said we're going out to eat at this certain restaurant. I said, oh, are we? But I guess that's what it, that's what it'll be. Um... Yeah, thank you, uh, Jeannie. Hello, CM Hawkins. Hello, everyone uh, that's logged on. Okay, so that, that's the basic composition right there. All right, now I haven't done this for a while, so I'm going to be blending a lot of colors on here. But one of the things that occurs to me it, um, when I've used a lot of these pens with the... Um, uh, these types of compositions and three millimeter pen usage. I I probably spend way too much time on the coloring portion because they kind of all get, co you know, covered up with a lot of the paint anyway. So maybe I'm kind of, you know, fiddling around with this a little bit too much, but I don't know. It's not like, you know, this is not fun here, coloring these trees right here. So you haven't seen, this is the trees right here and I'm going to be coloring in and blending a lot of the tones on here, the way that I learned how to do it. Working way back when, speaking of age, <laughs> at a stamp of the hand company, 
when everyone used to use these Marvy 1500 series pens, you know, that's, there weren't a lot of accessories back then. So I'm telling people this all the time. Like when they're, when I hear the term, like, are you going to use regular paper? I'm thinking, well, that glossy paper, that glossy paper is regular paper to me. More people were stamping, I think, on glossy back when, because we were, everyone was using these pens and stamps and glossy. And that, you know, that was your, those are the accessories right there. You know, there weren't other types of accessories around. There weren't any templates, stencils, um, and all that type of stuff. So, you know, you were able to get gloss, like gloss, glossy cardstock's a little bit hard to find now, especially internationally. Uh, even in Canada, you would think. Um, I don't know, I'm, I'm thinking some of these mills are probably in Canada at this point in time, like um, Chrome Coat, um, the guy over at, uh, Kelly Papers speculated that he thought it came from Canada, even though CTI Papers is a Italian brand, but their mills are probably all over the world. Um, hello, John. Okay, so anyway, spending a little bit of time on this. Now, the way that I use these pens is I go from dark to light, okay? And that way I feel I get a little bit more of a, of a blended look here. Okay, now this is what I usually do too on scenes is I usually go for my darker components in the front here, but this is going to be this deciduous tree and I thought I would do it in um, like fall, autumn tones or kind of, you know, kind of moving in that direction. It's always kind of hard to tell what these are going to look like when you do that degree of blending on them like that. I mean, I kind of figure it out by the time I get through, I color up like three or four of these, you know, I figure it out then, um, I'm done doing that. <laughs> so <laughs> I don't know. The first one might look a little bit rough. Then it's like, okay, don't use so much green or something like that or whatever. Okay. But like I said, these trees, all of the, my autumn trees are going to be really coated with a kind of a impressionistic um, application of those um, three millimeter paint pens. So if you haven't used these paint pens before, I'd really recommend it. Okay. That one re really green. Okay. That's what I was thinking. I spent a little bit too much, there's a bit of lint on this right here. So I didn't get in there, but it's gonna be coated in with pens anyways, right? Okay, so, okay, so that being said, let's go with a little bit more of this green on here, like that. And let's go with some orange. You're saying orange and green, what the heck, you know? But when it's all said and done, this, I wouldn't say this doesn't matter at all here because it kind of gives you your foundation. I gotta be careful when I wipe my pens like that that I don't get on my scene here. Um, but, you know, it's going to get coated a lot. Um, and these paint pens are not as um, tra uh, opaque as I would wish. So the colors underneath do show through, so. I don't know. You got a you know a nice variety there. I mean that looks better than just coloring it in one color or with a stamp pad. You know you get that little bit of variety in there. Here, that looks really weird like that. Let me just fill that in. Like so now that looks even weirder. But like I said, the paint pens are going to cover that up anyway. Okay, so I'm going a little bit lower than this one right here. Okay, so that we get this nice clear passageway in here. You know you kind of build it up like this over here. Maybe we'll use a uh, you know, leafless tree over this way or something like that. There's a beaver dam in here, so it, it can be said that, yeah, you know, the, these trees probably wouldn't be there. You know, this looks like an old style of lodge right there, so. But, uh, hey, you know, we're trying to make a really cool, ideal environment. Okay, let's see, what, uh, what was that? Oh... Let's see. I'll need a link to the type of foil paper. Oh, Froggy Fresh, the, the links are always underneath all of the YouTube videos. Um, when I use that foil paper, um, it'll say gold. What do I say? I say gold foil or silver foil. And it links to this one Amazon that has the gold, silver, and red. By the way, if anyone's in Canada, um, I heard that the red 60 pack of foil was like $16 Canadian, you know, all the other ones were like $30 or something like that. See, look at that. 
it came out way different like that. Um, but yeah, I don't know if the red, they're blowing it out or something like that, but I don't know. If people like that red, and if you're in Canada, I would check it out. I don't... <laughs> I don't think anyone needs 60 sheets. I don't need 60 sheets of that um, red one, but uh, I don't know. What can I say? I got it. And I, this person that I know, um, she bought it too. I said, what? You know, did you get that? You know, I was going to say, uh, but she says, you know, yeah, she'll have it. The red's, red's not really a good reflective one, but I don't know. It might be able to do something with it, with, you know, like super, super high contrast or something like that. I don't know. I found my 11 by 17 glossy cardstock. Oh. It's time, it sounds like. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I think if I do an 11 by 17 again, I think I'm going to do it like with this one. Although I don't have other colors of 11 by 17. Maybe I can do some kind of other color on 11 by 17, but I think I'm gonna go like 10 by 16 so I have that one inch to play around with a little bit of a border. Um, you know, so you can mat it. Okay, so going with orange like this. One good thing about using these big, huge stamps like this is, uh, it, you know, I'm gonna fill up a lot, a lot of this frame here just with some trees. I mean, look at that, that's like, I mean, that's not like a quarter of the page or something like that, but it's almost like a sixth right here. But what I'm envisioning is this. I want to do this. I'm, I'm really big on doing nighttime scenes. I want to just do a nice, bright daytime scene. Blue sky, you know, uh, brown dam, <laughs> earth dam, um... I was thinking about kind of a tiered thing. Every you know, when I've seen um, beaver dams before, it's kind of a system. It's not just like one dam and one pool. It's like a series of like a tiered area, you know, where they've kind of built up um, several levels. And I'm going for something like that in theory. Okay, what it comes out to be, I don't know, but we'll see. Uh, thanks for the birthday wishes. I don't even know how old I am. I'll have to look on Facebook to remind myself, or I'm gonna have to pull out a calculator to do the math. But I think I started forgetting, like, I don't know, several years ago. Um, I don't think it's dementia. <laughs> Not that that's anything to fool, you know, joke about, I know. I think it just shocks me every time I kind of hear that, you know, someone was, we were talking about, um, oh, something I was talking about with someone in the 90, you know, I was trying to think of um, when someone came up with the idea of photo stamping. And I said, it was like, I don't know, whatever, 90, um, I'm guessing it was around 96 or 97. And I was like, let me see, how, how long is that? <laughs> On the other hand, maybe it's a good sign. Time flies when you're having fun, right? Okay, so here goes another one right here. So I'm going like right here. It's going to be covering this up and that's probably going to be showing through again because lighter colors and dye based inks are going to be transparent. But like I said, don't worry about all that. You know, we're going to be filling. I want this to really kind of resonate and kind of shimmer with a lot of um, color in here, so. All right, let's see. Let's go like this on here. This is gonna be filled in probably with green or something like that. Or we can also make it earthen, you know, around there. Kind of seasonal rains come in on the shorelines. They tend to fill in, you know, drains out a little bit, you know, by the time summer and fall comes around or something like that. So sometimes right along there, not that we're having to, you know, kind of be real technical about it, but what I'm just saying is that you can color, like, color these things any color you want. And, um, you know, it'll look, you know, real naturalistic. Look at that one. Came out the same-ish color as that one. Okay, so this beaver dam is going to go right, roughly, roughly right around in here. And I wanted to create this other um, pool back in this area right here. So we're kind of going around in this area like this. I'm going to come around in here, and then we'll have some other trees kind of going around in here. Then I thought, 
back in the distance we'll have some like distant mountains or something like that i thought about a waterfall back in here but i thought eh, maybe that would be too much you know but okay so i want to do an additional shoreline over here but i thought about instead of doing it kind of earthen i thought i would use this but this is going to be way too big so i'm going to mask off like most of this and i'm going to have this rock in the background it just kind of for a textural um contrast too so i'm just going to let's see let's put it up about right here i would say i'm going to have to make this fairly you know pretty straight right here so let's go like this and we'll do this right in here okay okay hello pam thanks for joining in yeah you can go fishing in here there's a lot of uh what rainbows and um browns in here goldens do you fish uh not afraid of color Some of the YouTube videos I watch are like fishing videos. I like the ones where they're going in, I don't know, like these high, you know, kind of alpine streams and stuff or little lakes and they're pulling out little, you know, natural uh, fish. I find those ones really intriguing. Or the urban ones too, where they're pulling out gigantic fish out of some kind of like, I don't know spillway <laughs> I guess I watched them all okay so I'm just going for this top portion right here all right like that okay so you can create this little shoreline back in that direction let's go for another one over here okay uh, I still have to I have to figure out a place to do the um, the lodge too. Not that we have to have a lodge, but I think it would be a good idea to do so. Hello, Donna. Let's see. It flies either way. Lots of weeds here. <laughs> You're only as old as you feel. Happy birthday. Thank you. How old do I feel? I don't know. I'm trying to think if I feel older than... I don't know. Let's say when I started Samscapes. I don't think... Well, physically, if I try to do certain things, I definitely feel my age. Like, I love going out to Joshua Tree and climbing around on the rocks and sometimes I'm out there I'm thinking do I belong out here it's up at, it's up at 4,000 feet so I get acclimated but at the end of it but every time I go out there after a f you know not being out there for a few months it's like uh maybe I shouldn't be out here but stamping yeah stamping I don't know ageless right <laughs> uh let's see Rainbow with alcohol inks and Q-tips. Huh. Interesting. People have asked me if I've done rainbows in scenes before, and I haven't. Um, the thing about rainbows is that they're, you know, they're developed with light, right? So I've always been kind of um, uncertain as to how to apply it in here and make the area around it darker, because we're working on a white reflective surface here. We're not working with, like, you know, actual light. Um... But I've always thought that uh, maybe the rainbow holographic thing uh, surfaces would be kind of my answer to that. It wouldn't be a, an official like rainbow in the sky or something like that. Or what would be kind of interesting if you could do something like if you've seen like like a waterfall or something like that. And that, you know, that bending of light within the mist. I love that look, you know, it was something like that. I've even seen um, what they call moon bows, you know, out at uh, Lower Falls in Yosemite one um trip out there one time it just happened to be we were kind of going by there and uh happened to be like a full moon that night luckily i was coming back from a trip to death valley and um we stopped in there and saw those moon bows i was shocked that you can actually see some light from the light of the moonlight i don't know i didn't think there would be any kind of color in that at all but um really interesting okay so let's see let's go with some extra deciduous you know the um tree cluster right here represents um kind of some evergreens plus that little deciduous tree in the middle here 
So let's build up a little of that as well. And we're kind of getting the structure of our scene in here. Um, I'll put in the, um, probably the beaver dam next, but just kind of building up the setting like this. But while I'm doing all this kind of coloring right here, actually, let's go with, um, oh, let's see. I think one of my bottle green. Oh, okay, the bottle green's still good. I know one of my pads was kind of, I think maybe this is a new bottle green right here. I happen to have one that was still new. I think my other one kind of disintegrated on me. Okay, so let's go with some green in the middle of this one. And then we'll add in some other types of, you know, fall tones on this deciduous tree post um, impression. Okay. They're restocking with salmon out here. Let me see. Where's that, Kay? It's interesting when they, um, some of these um, different um, kinds of environments, I noticed, uh, I've watched some of these, um, like where they've taken down a dam or something like that, and then they've opened up the uh, the waterway again, you know, that hasn't been opened in, you know, whatever, a hundred years or something like that. And uh, restocking of the uh, fry upstream or something like that. And um, it's, it's just like nature just goes back to normal, you know, you get that kind of that migration of those salmon, you know, like the following year, you know, I don't know how that happens. You know, if it hasn't been kind of happening in years, it's kind of always kind of interesting. All right, so tree cluster here. I I could have went with the uh, the uh, uh, quaking aspen, the smaller version of it, but I, I don't know. When I was doing this, I couldn't find that smaller version. I just saw this tree, and I thought, okay, I'm just going to grab that one. Otherwise, I probably would have used the, uh, the, the quaking aspen up here. I don't know. Maybe it's good to kind of mix it up, though, with the tree cluster. And if this is going to be water in here, I need to figure out um, kind of a reflective type of element of it. Maybe, I don't know. I don't have to, but it might be a good idea to do that. I'm not sure. Um, or, I tell you what, here, let me do something here. Okay, this is going to be, I'm just going to use the top portion of this, okay? And I'm just going to go like this. Let me get the curved part of that ripped paper towel here. Like about like so. All right. Speaking of fishing, I haven't been fishing in years. Oh, thank you, Sam Hawkins. Appreciate that. Sam Hawkins gets this scene today. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> uh, Yosemite. I haven't been back to Yosemite since I saw that. Uh, no, I have. I was going to say I haven't been back to Yosemite since I saw those moon bows, but um, I haven't. Yosemite's gotten so busy, and I kind of, I don't like going to um, places with crowds in general. And then when I'm out in nature, I especially don't like it. I'll do it, you know. Someone says, hey, Kevin, you know, we want to go out to wherever. And it's like, okay, you know, sure, I'll go. Uh, but I prefer, you know, not, you know, being amongst, uh, you know, a gazillion people. Um, I have a lot of places that I go um, kind of off trail uh, where we, there's just no one around and still there's no one around. So I kind of got spoiled with that. Not out in Yosemite. I wouldn't go off trail in Yosemite or something like that. But um, I don't know, just some more of the local mountains and deserts and whatnot, national parks and such. Okay, let's see. All right. So going with a lower impression area for this one, okay. All right. You make your dark clouds, put your white mist where the rainbow is going. Okay, dark clouds, white mist where the rainbow is going. Then you use your alcohol inks over it. Oh, really? 
The, now, the alcohol inks are going to apply over the brilliance white. The brilliance white would just kind of go right back into solution when it when it just kind of like, or do you seal it first? You'll have to heat emboss before. Oh, okay, okay, yeah. Oh, got it. I was gonna say yeah. I, I'm sorry, I just didn't read down. I read down it, you know, lower like that. Okay. All right, so we got some trees there. So we're kind of opening up this little area, and let's see what the, this is going to be. Of course, like this, you know, but let's go like that. So it's starting to come together. We're starting. To, you guys kind of starting to envision the composition right here. I don't know what I'm going to put in here. I guess that can be an opening for more water, something like that. Okay, so let's let's do this. Let's. That is kind of creating kind of this darker kind of entity for sure, okay? So let's go like this, and... I can see right now, too, um, when I start adding in all that colored paint, it's going to look... I think it's going to look really, really weird, okay? Uh, I'm, not, I'm not sure if I'm going to get to it in this live stream, uh, but we'll start getting to some of that then. This is, you know, this is a pretty big composition. I thought I would go, I wanted to go big because I haven't been on in a while, so. Um, oh, I don't know. Doing that last, I don't know, what was that, 11 by 17 scene? What was it, like a month ago at this point in time or something like that? But, um, I don't know, after you do something like that, like the, like the full page scenes, like, like this is a small scene now. <laughs> What is it? Perception is by contrast, right? Uh, thanks, Donna. Let's see. The four rock formations look like old cars. Well, that could be. Um, that could be Joshua Tree. There's no more rocks. Uh, there's no more rocks anywhere, I think, as far as a national park goes than Joshua Tree. As far as, like, individual rocks. Not like, you know, it's probably Yosemite in terms of the... Uh, the volume of rock, you know, just with the, you know, El Cap and, you know, everything out there is granite, so the whole place is, like, uh, rock. But, um, yeah. Okay. Oh, you grew up in Sonora. Very cool. All right, I think it's time for the beaver dam here. And it's been a while since I've stamped this. The fire falls over the falls. Wow. If you guys don't know what uh, uh, Not Afraid to Color is talking about, you gotta look online and check out that um, fire fall. I never saw that. Um, I don't know when that stopped, but um, yeah, that was uh, <laughs> that was like one of the biggest... Uh, it was probably the biggest attraction, right? At the time, they would toss. Um, they would. What rock were they uh, pouring that over? Um, I don't know what it was, but um, someone would make like this ranger would make like a big bonfire and uh, shovel it over the edge. You know, uh, you got to check that out. There's a whole documentaries on that. Uh, on that uh, fire fall. Nowadays, they you know the the fire fall. What they were referring to now is the uh, sunset off coming off of uh, I don't know if it's Upper Falls or something like that. And if you look at it uh, from a certain angle, it looks like this fire because it's illuminated with warm you know lighting in the uh, you know that sunset glow. So um, that looks really cool too. I don't think I've seen that one in person either. I haven't really spent, I spent a lot of time hiking, you know, camping and stuff like that, but yeah, not Yosemite. It was crowded for me back when, now it's like, you know, a, a gazillion more people, and now you have to even have, like, reservations just to get in the park. I would just, a lot of times when I was driving back from Mammoth, the Eastern Sierras and Death Valley, I just like, okay, I'm just going to drive back through, um you know, uh, Yosemite on my way back home, you know, and it would be no big deal, you know, it's like, okay, I'm going to stop and, you know, the valley there, or I would, you know, take a hike up at Taft Point and, uh, uh, 
Oh, what was that? Glacier Drive or something like that? Taft Point and the Fissures and, uh, oh, okay, yeah. Some of those places up there and it was like no big deal. You can park anywhere you want. The Cherry Dam Fire. Oh, okay. Late 70s. Wow. I think they did it, didn't they do it once? I don't know, like within the last 15 years ago. I saw like a one-time thing, I thought. Uh, hello, PJB. Good to see ya. Okay, so I stamped this, or I colored it in black, but now I'm going in with the brown. If I just do this, if I, things that I want kind of brown, if it's a cabin or, you know, something like a tree trunk or something like that, I find that I like it better going into, um, or rendered on this with black, but with more like brown embellishments or something like that. I find that kind of brown alone can look a little bit too anemic for me. Um, unless there's some brown out there that's practically black or something like that. Because we're, you know, we're going to be coloring in different parts of this anyways, but talk about, okay, so this one, this might have been my toughest design ever. When you can see it right here, well, I'll stamp it out. I mean, God, getting that jumble in there, looking correct in terms of a beaver dam, I did... I don't know when I drew this, but I don't think there was internet research either, so I was going off of, like, any kind of photograph that I could find. And then I don't want it to look like, you know, those beaver dams aren't, you know, they're engineered. They're not, like, just this big, gigantic, you know, mishmash tumble, you know? So this one, I don't know, it took me forever. I think I, I, think I stopped working on it at one point in time, too for like a year or something like that. And then I kind of went back to it. And then after that, I had to do the, uh, the lodge. <laughs> Another big tumble, you know what I mean? <sighs> okay, so. There we go, like that, all right. So you get a little bit of variation in there. Can you see some of the black and the brown too, like that? All right, now I know I have this over here to go, but I'm not just going to leave it like that as is, okay? Because I'm going to be doing a lot of coloring in here. By the way, I'm working on um, the semi-gloss here, not the glossy, so that I can come in here and apply um, colored pencils into this if I want to, all right? So it'll be with dye-based inks and colored pencils. Colored pencils, you can kind of apply it on the glossy, but you definitely can't kind of work it, you know, with layers or anything like that, because it's just not going to apply. It just, you know, there's no tooth to it, so. Um, uh, the semi-gloss is like a really good, um, to me, um, kind of in-between uh, surface so that you get really great um, impression quality because it is sealed off, but then it has, it's not so sealed off that you can't use um, like colored pencils on there. And for some reason, I don't know why, it, just in my head, I've always kind of used um, this semi-gloss with the acrylic paint pens instead of glossy with paint pens. I don't know why. Maybe because when you apply this down, it's glossy looking, you know, acrylic paint. And then, um, you know, there's no contrast between this and the service. Maybe I want to go for more con. I don't know why, but um, uh, I guess I could break out of it if I want to. But I don't know. That's always been my notion, right there. Okay, so we got our we have our structure there. Maybe I can. Maybe I should really position this lodge now. Okay, so we're going this way. So I want to carry the viewer's attention this way. I think I'm going to put the lodge right over here so that we're going in here and we're going up here. That would be kind of the general pattern, visual pattern right now. I, I should probably put this down in here. Let's see. I 
I thought they did some kind of anniversary of the fire over the falls thing. That's what I was thinking. I thought I saw that at some point in time, um, looking at those um, news stories on YouTube of, uh, you know, that um, fire falls or whatever it was called. Uh, yeah, I don't remember uh, if it was associated with anything. Yeah, okay, so that that image right there, that was that was insane to draw. I a I, I never want to draw another beaver dam again, I think. <laughs> I'm looking at it right now. I remember like putting some of these branches over the top of it and having you know, some of them having you know, wide off and you know and getting the texturing on there. And then some of them are a little bit more textured than others, so you know, so that some stand out. You know, some are kind of going in and out too. I was like, "Curse you, beavers!" You know, I was thinking maybe I should have done an earth, like an earth, more of an those kind of beaver earthen dams where there's like a couple branches on top, you know, but it's mostly like earthen. <laughs> you know, because those beavers use a lot of um, they use a lot of mud in their constructions too. But here's my theory, here's my thought uh, when it comes to drawings. Um, if it's something like a beaver dam, I feel that I want to do like the best beaver dam ever drawn, you know, if I'm only going to be doing it once. And so I might as well spend all the time that I can on whatever it is, you know, a beaver dam or a lighthouse or something like that. I should do other lighthouses too, but um, yeah, the beaver dam was... I said, okay, I'm just going to be doing that probably once in my life, so, you know, dedicate your uh, time to it. Let's see. Okay, so not afraid of color. Let's see. Oh, you were wrong. The late 60s was when the last firefall was. Well, that's that sounds more like it to me. I remember watching that. I don't remember that, um, the uh, documentary, but I seem to recall that it was pretty some pretty old footage, but I thought they did it again for some reason. Uh, for some purpose. Um, maybe like it was a one-time thing or something like that. Yeah, they figured it was, it was, it just wasn't a, uh, a natural type of phenomenon and it kind of went against their, the kind of the spirit of the, uh, you know, the national park, um, I don't know, philosophy, I guess, you know, dumping, you know, dumping a bonfire over the cliff, you know, <laughs> you know? <laughs> but, you know, hey, maybe that's one of those things that they had to do back when, you know, they had to kind of get interest, you know, um, for doing those, you know, getting people out, you know, and join um, the national park system. So, you know, maybe that was one of those things that, you know, just had to be done at the time. Okay, so I need something else out here. I want to create like a farther... Um, kind of imagery in here, because I, I need something to kind of create a transition zone between um, this area and some kind of more rugged mountains, I thought, in here. So, okay, so in here, this all looks like this water thing, but this looks kind of boring like this, so I think it'd be a good idea to break this up with some more um, kind of rocks or something like, you know, sticking out of the water in here just to kind of break up that monotony. All right, so I think that looked pretty good with that rock in the background there. So maybe I can use, use um, the top of it again. Where did it go? Uh -oh. Okay, let me see. Maybe this would be good in the distance, like back in here. I don't know. I mean, maybe... We should make this um, kind of grassy terrain back in this area right in here. Again, because, you know, these beavers wouldn't be building this beaver dam in an established gigantic lake. It's in this, you know, grassy, you know, kind of um, land terrain where they're creating this kind of ecosystem. So, um, hmm. Yeah, maybe I'll do, maybe I'll do sedge filler or something like that. I don't know. I'm just thinking out loud here, trying to figure this out. All right. Oh yeah, Stamp Away's coming up, isn't it? Speaking of that, what is that, the first weekend of August? Or is it the second weekend of August? I 
I didn't read that. Uh, yeah. Hope Froggy, Froggy, hope your kid's okay with whatever, whatever happened there. Okay, so creating another little area here. Let's put this, let's put this rock coming in from down here. I think I'm coming up with a new usage for this. Boulders with lichen. For me, you know, I'm not saying this hasn't been done before. But just kind of filling this in like that, okay. And maybe we can fill in another one around here. Let's see. Uh-oh. She burnt three quarters of her right arm. Sheesh. That sounds pretty serious there. Burns are bad. But she's okay though, huh? I hope it was like just like first degree burns. Was it something like hot liquid or something like that? My goodness. Okay, let's see here. Okay, so going like this, going like this. When I find something, I tend to go a little bit nuts with it here. Okay, so building this in like this. Let's get another little tiny piece right there. Not that this has to be done, but I didn't even get it on there. Okay, go like that. Rocks out this way. I don't think I want to. Do I want to put rocks right here? No, let's open. Let's leave it open. Okay, so that is that. Okay, so let, here, let me build up my. Oh. I'm scrolling down here. I got stuck up at the top again. Yeah, they build in the building them in like moving water streams and such. So this will be the stream here or wherever it was, and then it kind of expanded out like that, and it's tiered down here. Uh, we're going to be using a lot of white. Um, pigment ink. <laughs> it's always to kind of unify things. Although things are looking fairly unified right now. Um, kind of more than I thought it would be. Okay, I want things looking more like even richer here. So I'm going to use the tops. Of, I should go look for my smaller Aspen stamp while doing this, but... Um, Oh, yeah, the flight cancellations. Someone asked me if I can go teach somewhere out of the country, well, Canada, and I was th thinking, this was like, I don't know, later on in the fall or something like that, and I was thinking, you know, with my luck and flights, I don't know about recently, because I haven't flown in a while, in a few years, but... Everything was getting canceled on me. Connections, return flights, but especially going somewhere. Um, thing I was always getting canceled, and it was like, you know, I mean, if you're scheduled to teach somewhere, um, I guess I, that's what I would have to do. I'd have to go out early or something like that just to leave myself, you know, some leeway in, in, in the event that uh, my flight would get canceled. I'm not. I'm not doing it. But um, but that was that would be my one big concern um, is uh, the flight cancellation. I mean, it'd be really bad to be on. You know, scheduled to teach somewhere. You know, and then you don't show up. <laughs> you know. 
it's like there's no excuses. You just have to be there. So you'd have to, I don't know, I'd have to, yeah, do like you did, you know, and have an extra day in there just in case. My paper towel looks like cross-stitch. Oh, look at that. I didn't mask all the way down there. Okay, so that's going... I could fill in like that. That's no problem. But I'm going to be putting this, all this kind of misty kind of look in here anyways. Well, actually, that's a little bit big of an area right there. Here, let me just go like this. Let me just fill in with a little bit of extra texture. And like I said, um, you know, we're going to be filling in with a lot of extra um, paint pen in there anyway. So I just stamped a little bit more in there. Okay. All right, so we're building it up, right? All right, now, if you've never seen these scenes done before and you're just kind of logging in for the first time, um, there's a lot of, I always mention to people when doing these types of things, if there's certain parts, like there's all kinds of little things like this that happen to me all the time, everywhere in my scenes where they just don't kind of unify or if I misstamp something, you know, there's that blotch right there. Things get added in here anyway, they get colored in layered with other types of applications. You know, we were talking about pigment ink before here on the, you know, uh, on the chat window here. That gets added in. Um, you know, it, j I mean, just the coloring alone will do that. But when you get to the um, kind of the accessorizing with uh, different types of media, pigment ink and um, paint pens, that type of thing, that all acts as a blending kind of mechanism in itself, so um, I wouldn't worry about any of that. And I, I don't worry about a lot of times even through the coloring process because I just know that um, the, the last couple steps tend to answer some problems, and if I have some real problems, I'm just going to stamp something, you know, a big tree coming over the, you know, the side or something like that. I'll just cover something up completely. And oftentimes it ends up enhancing the piece anyways because it brings extra depth into it too, so, um, yeah. Never been to a stamp convention. I think you mentioned that before, yeah. Those are, those are really fun, Froggy Fresh. Um, I don't know, it, whoever hasn't been to a stamp convention, there's, <clears throat> we think about the, um, the experience just in general of you know, the booths and the stamps and the products and shopping under one thing. But there's something to being in a room, too. I mean, and people have experienced this with other types of things, too. But when you're in that room, it's just kind of... It's nice being kind of in some space like that with, I don't know, 500,000, you know, whatever, 1,500 people kind of with the same... <laughs> interest as you and there's just this, like this energy in there a lot of times you know unless it's a dead show or something like that you know but it usually isn't but um you know just where i don't know it it's like one of those unseen things you know at a at a show it's just that invisible kind of creative energy you know because when you look at something oftentimes and there's hundreds of people looking at stuff and it's like I don't know what it is. It's like the ideas are spinning, you know, thinking of ways that you can use this or how you can apply something. I, I just happen to think that there is something to that where you can kind of feel that in the air, you know. It's like people kind of devising and envisioning themselves using whatever product they're looking at. You know, and you can just feel it in the air. Okay, so the, here's some more trees like this. I'm going to use this as little bushes down here. Okay, so it's just not like just straight tree and whatever, you know what I mean? I mean, there would be, you know, like bushes in this area. There'd probably be more bushes than trees. Usually this lower line stuff. So this is ten, tends to be really good filler um, elements. And it'll just, it'll really kind of contribute to a lot of extra... Um, textural variety in this area and plus it does another thing too and it fills up you know this kind of extra space um, in your area so the more things you fill in with imagery um, in theory the less kind of decision making you have to do with um, when it comes to like color applications or 
whole big areas of area to fill in with color, having to get that all smooth, you know, I tend to fill it in more with like textures and things like that. And that saves me some time too from the coloring process, certain types of coloring processes. Yeah, you can get a little bit overwhelmed if you haven't been to a convention before. Um, I haven't been to a, con you know, certain conventions. I, I don't, I was going to the Mesa, Arizona show one for a while um, after not going to shows for a long time. And that one was, it was a nice and busy one, but it wasn't, it wasn't like over, super overwhelming. But that one over there in Cincinnati with, um, I don't know how many booths are still there. I don't know if there, if there's 40 or if it's still, does anyone know if it's still um, two stories um, with uh, booths there? But a lot of the shows used to get up to, you know, if there was a two-story venue, it those got filled up and there was like room after room after room. <clears throat> and uh, the crowds too, you know, some, some like Carson was nuts, you know, with uh, people walking around. People were, you know, having their, um, you know, their trolleys and stuff like that to carry their stuff, which was a really smart idea. But it was just like, everyone was like, trying to get around in there and the booths were packed too and i don't know there's some people left those shows having not even not even having realized that they saw every room out there yeah that's exactly it huh okay it's great with being people so even if you don't know people you know what they you know what they love doing you know that's for sure Oh, you got your sentiment sheets. Great, great. I was looking at some other sentiment uh, pieces that um, I hadn't seen before. Someone posts them on um, Pinterest um, and not on something like Facebook or something like that. So I'm not always on, I'm not like hardly ever on Pinterest, but um, uh, I saw some really great pieces, but she used sentiment like on every scene and it looked really awesome. She It was usually up in the sky area um, so I was looking at those ones today. All right, now where is my... I should always have my... Oh, here we go. Do you guys have certain stamps that are always kind of handy around your table? Uh, you know, to grab and utilize? Um, this is one of them for me, the Sedge Filler stamp. Okay, let's see. I'm trying to think of what, I, what color I want in the distance there. I could you know, do a small stream back there, but I don't think I'm going to do that. Maybe I'll do it. I mean, it could be implied too. Okay, so just going like that. So I'm just going for a little bit of texturing back in there like that, okay? You could do some texturing in here, even though if that's going to be filled up with water, like, you know, water texture, but you can have something like, you know, you, it can look like it's underneath the surface, you know, where that water is just kind of filling in like that. What was that? Was that the what hotel was that? PJB was that the was that the Radisson? Uh, for those that haven't gone to um, Stamp Away, that's the Cincinnati Convention, and um, they would, there used to be a store there, Stamp Your Art Out, can, I can never remember if it was Stamp Your Heart Out or Stamp Your Art Out, there was conventions uh, in uh, different stores named those two different things, but um, I think it was Stamp Your Art Out, and um, they would have um, usually demonstrations. I don't think they would do any of the workshops over at the store, maybe, but I know there was a lot of demonstrations going on all the time. But then at the hotel and maybe at the convention center too, there were con uh, workshops going on from Thursday um, through... Did they have con did they have workshops on Saturday too? I'm not sure if they had workshops going on during the convention. I don't think they did, but <clears throat> I was mentioning this before. But I always felt that that show, that show for me was the ideal format 
for a convention with all those um, workshops going. It, it, it was more of a retreat type of thing covering um, three days, I guess, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. It was only a one day show. But there might, I don't know. I don't know if there was some residual stuff going on on Sunday, like over at the store, maybe. Um, but I always love that format there. Um, I always thought that Kathy should do something similar over at A Stamp of the Hand with the Carson show. But the, so she started doing some um, workshops over at the um, convention center or the Carson Community Center on Friday, I think it was, but it, I don't know. It just didn't, it, it wasn't the same as that uh, Cincinnati show. Not that Cincinnati show was the best one or anything like that, but I thought definitely probably the best um, um, event, you know, just, just in terms of an event there. Okay, so this is the Rocky Peaks right here, and these are going off in the distance, and I'm going to transition this from light ink to medium to full ink up here so it's going from that nice um, gradation of values going from dark to light down here because I want it to look real kind of distant back there. I don't want to do it too light though because um, I want to give myself some options as to how dark to do it. So I mean, if I was to do this like a second time, maybe I would think, oh, I should have done that lighter or something like that. So it looks like something's a little bit more uh, distant or something like that. But I'm just doing it dark right here because I can always kind of use some white pigment ink over it too to lighten it up if I make it too dark. Is there ever a convention in Columbus? There might have been years ago. I don't know if there would be one these days. Does anyone know the answer to that? Um, in Ohio, there were, you know, there was the Akron show that goes on. And then the Akron show, they had it in another area, but it was basically still the Akron show going on. So I don't think, I don't know, there might have been, there might have been a third convention in Ohio. A lot of times, now there was there was one um, convention coordinator that would totally kind of overlap, and he would just you know create shows everywhere. But it was kind of an unwritten type of thing where if there was an established show in a given area, you don't go in and create another show in that given area, you know once someone already had something established in there, it wouldn't be good for, you know, the local retailers in that area. And I don't know, it just generally, it used to create a little bit of confusion. So I don't know if someone thing went into Columbus cause that was, you know, relatively speaking, um, close enough to Cincinnati where they might not have done that. But like I said, that other coordinator went in and did something. I, I forgot the name of that um, kind of entity. Okay, so anyways, I don't know. I almost took off too much ink off of that there. I don't know why it looks like that. Why? It's because I wiped it off like that. <laughs> okay, so anyways, that's down there. Okay, I'm going to put some extra trees in there anyways. Um, okay, so those are going to create my more distant things. Let's mask off down here. Let's get some additional tree row up there. Um Let's go with this. Anyways, do you see how I'm building this in? If you guys haven't seen this before, uh, I know all you guys that are posting here, but if there's anyone in the background watching this, one of, one of the things I did was I started off, it's, you know, it's not a formula here, but it, it, it could be a formula, you know, in terms of where you start. You start, you know, I started off with my larger elements, okay? And then, while this is a large stamp and it's no smaller than, you know, it's almost as large as this, I'm using smaller portions of it here, okay? So it's almost like it's easier to kind of put, you know, position your larger elements, okay, in, and then it's easier to, you know, add in your smaller elements in terms of filler spaces and whatnot. Now, sometimes, you know, maybe you're smallest element is going to be the most dramatic, you know, I'm going to have a, a fisherman here on a boat or something like that, then you might want to, you know, consider that before you do everything else around it, you know, because if that's going to be the main focus of it. So 
But by and large, what I'm doing here, it's this typical large to small style of application of designs for the compositional purposes. And again, I'm working this very large, you know, scene here. Normally, you know, if you're working a standard quarter page card, you know, it's, you know, there's going to be a lot less elements used. Now, I haven't used a huge amount of different designs here, but I've used them multiple times here. So, yeah. I snuck in there, Linda. Yeah. I, uh, I'm doing a big one because I haven't been on, you know, for a while here. So, yeah. Um, anyways, let's see here. Okay, let's get some additional trees. Okay, so being that I was saying that, uh, let's see. Do I have one of my really small pine tree stamps? I'm looking for like my pine duo here. We can use this one. I started putting away a lot of my designs uh, just to tidy things up a little bit. So you put designs away to tidy things up a little bit, but then you can't find anything. It was better better when it was cluttered. Okay, so anyway, uh, let me just use here. I'll just use these ones right here. You can use pine trees. You know, if you want some small pines or small trees of any kind, you just, you know, you can grab them off any image, of course. Let me, here, let me go with, um, uh, what color do I want to do these in? Oh, let's go with, oh, let's, let's do them fairly light right here, okay? I'm going to go for these ones right here, just because there's a little bit of a grouping of them right there, okay? And we're just going to go like this, and we'll go down here. So you're planting trees. <laughs> Here, I'll color them up here. I was just about go for, to go for a second impression, but let's go ahead and um, do that. Um, okay. Yeah, I'm using the dam. Well, da one dam. And the lodge here. Uh, well, someone, I don't know, you guys, uh, someone asked for it on one of these. I don't know if the pe person that asked for it is in here, but um, we were talking about that. Um, I don't know, Jeannie mentioned it. She goes, I, you know, she's got those images too. On the last, you know, the last, uh, one of the last streams. The space between the beaver dam and the trees is driving me nuts. Between the beaver dam and trees? Like right in here? Oh, well, that's going to be all colored in, Donna. But if it's driving you nuts, though, you know, um, like I said, you shouldn't, there's nothing at this point in time in a scene that should ever drive you nuts. Unless that's the thing that inspires you to, you know, for creativity. Because, you know, it's like if someone was like, uh, I don't know, laying down something like preliminary things. It's like this is like step one out of, you know, step A out of, uh, you know, getting to O or something like that. Unless the emotional tone, like I said, some people, it you know, they're inspired by that emotional energy or something like that. Then, yeah, then definitely uh, go nuts. <laughs> I always say whatever works for you. But if it's a if it's an undesirable kind of emotion, um, you know, uh, don't let it don't let it interfere with creativity. Ideally, you know, I mean, some of the best scenes that I do are the places where I've had to kind of solve problems and figure something out. Um, and that's when I learn the most um, from pieces. And that's what I, I, I oftentimes, I, I was mentioning, I, I see that in other people's, you know, it's like scenes that they've put away and they've gone back to. And when I've seen that written and when people have mentioned that type of thing, Sometimes it occurred to me that I think some of those pieces are the best pieces that I've seen from people. And it's that kind of that learning process, you know, they've, you know, they've broken kind of some new ground in some ways and came, came up with some creative solutions. And then those are the types of things that they apply 
going forward in future things. And it, they never would have thought of it had they not had to kind of come up with a solution for an area that wasn't working for them. But that's why I always say, don't toss those pieces out, you know. Always kind of, there's something, you know, that you can probably do with it. Or, you know, they were thinking about it in terms of the end result. Oh, I don't like how it, you know, the scene came out. But they don't see it as like, you know, they saw it as the destination, not as part of the process where they can add on more things to it, you know, and have it, you know, be resolved. With scenes, you can always just go darker, though. <laughs> you know, you know, if I have problems, you know, and it's a daytime scene, it just, you know, you just turn down the light, you know, and it's fine for a scene. You know, you can you can do that. You know, just you know, you're working on high noon and it doesn't look good, and turn it to twilight where you can't see as much. And then if you really can't see it, make it a midnight scene or something like that, where it's really kind of toned in like that. Let's see, someone joined in there. Hello, uh, GD, GD4. Oh, GD4, that's the, uh, <laughs> that's a good, uh, that's a good uh, uh, short for the, for uh, Diana, yeah. Uh, okay, let's see here. I think I'm just about ready to color in. Some of you are cracking up, but you know, it, it, finally, you know. But I think that's about it. Okay, so here's what I'm looking at, you know, just in terms of this piece right here. Oh, I do have that beaver. I'm, I'm uncertain if I'll use the beaver in here. I can put him down here, like really in the foreground. No, oh, I had, I pulled out the smaller one. Okay, so this one can go anywhere. Okay, this one, it's like that big. Okay, I was thinking that larger one, I don't want to use too many of them, unless it was kind of a little bit more obscured. I don't want them like, you know, like really prominent or something like that. All right, let's see. <laughs> if it's driving you nuts, he's done his job. <laughs> uh, let's see. Okay, yeah. Um, all right, so I'm trying to think of my approach to coloring this right now. Um, I'm thinking, for me, I'm thinking about what am I going to do right in here. That was one of the big things, okay? I, this part doesn't bother me at all because it's just like background and there's going to be like a white mist and veil over everything in the distance anyways. But this part right here, that's another, you know, thing. Um, I do like, okay, now, these types of deciduous trees like this, I've always used with my autumn bank left and right pieces. A lot of times when I add on a lot of color on those pieces, it starts to look, the richer you make um, certain areas with a buildup of color, okay, it can potentially get richer from the usage of the colors but the problem is with the addition of more and more media, it gets more kind of obscured in terms of the, um, the, the range of soft and sharp, okay? Now, right now, everything's fairly sharp, okay? But the more I color these things and you apply more tone down on it, right? Um, it builds up, so I lose some of the sharpness of it. So that's where, okay, what I'm getting at is I'd like to add in trees like this that are nice and kind of spindly because they are you can see right through them but you get the added element of that crisp you know branch on there or crisp trunk or something like that so something like this in here would be perfect for the um like maybe the larger version of this would be even better like something like this in here maybe that's a little bit too big but i can add like these things down in here in these areas, okay? Maybe the smaller one would go um, back in here. So I'll probably use that. I don't know how visible it's going to be um, because it's going to be all colored in, so it's not going to be like black against white, but those are the types of things that I'm already kind of thinking about right now. I'm not concerned about it right now. I'll just kind of figure it out, you know, when I get there. Okay, but, okay, so this area in here, so let's talk about lighting, okay? Um, this is the general visual path that I see, kind of going like this, all right? So I'm thinking about going darker over here and darker over here. 
and maybe a little bit darker. I'll have some tone coming in here, so there'll be this visual path. See, this is a natural visual path going on this way. And then I want it to end up right in here. So I'm thinking maybe on either this side, I can make it a little bit more extreme. This side right here to the mountain, though, it's naturally lit, and I put a little bit more shadow on that side of the mountain. So maybe I'll put my lighting right here, okay? I'm going to do it really basic, okay? So I'm going to make my tones around here a little bit darker, like this, okay? This is what I generally do, too. Don't get real confused about this, either. Usually the perimeter is just a little bit darker, okay? And then you kind of start tweaking things a little bit more. This area right here is grass, or land, or whatever, right in here. So this is going to be a little bit darker than something really reflective like water, okay? So, you know... This is just dark out here, so I'm just going to bring in this darkness a little bit more like this, I think, into this area. And then this area in here will just stay a little bit more illuminated. And then plus, I mean, I think some shading around on these trees would look good anyway, okay? So underneath things, you want to put a little bit of shadow. And I forgot already, I was thinking about adding in some, um, like an upside down tree in here, you know, for a little bit of shadow. I don't know if I'm going to do that. It might make things a little bit, you know, kind of uh, busy looking. So, okay, so that being said, um, let's add in some, let's start adding in some tone here, okay? All right, so I'm going to start adding in some tone, and I'm going to give myself a little bit of a head start, too, with the use of this water pattern stuff. I think I've mentioned this before in terms of a, uh, it's a textural pattern right here, and great for water, but you can also use it just as kind of a, a shading device that gives you a head start in your toning process, okay? Now, it's going to look real textural and things like that, and that's not going to be what it's going to look like in the end result, just adding this in. There's going to be a lot more color added in. This is like step, you know, in the toning, in the coloring processes, you know, we'll, this will probably have like a five-step type of thing, you know, going with base layers and shade, you know, warm tones and whatever, you know. But, so this is like step one of many, you know, that will be added in here. And, okay, so that being said, Let's just start it off with some lighter tones. Um, here, I'll use the mementos. A lot more of you have mementos than you have Marvy. I'm going to use the Marvies on here because, you know, Marvies, you can't get any brighter tone than Marvy. But let's start off with this one. All right. With this water pattern stamp, um, I typically go horizontal with this one right here. Okay. I've seen very dynamic things where they've used it kind of at a diagonal, uh, genie, you know. <laughs> genie does all kinds of different angles, you know, with uh, her pieces. Super dynamic, and, you know, she's really good at that. I am very unpracticed at that, so... But I should dry it, you know. Okay, so see this where I'm adding it in? It's I, I'm, not, I'm not going for exactly texture. It's just kind of developing the texture inherently with each impression. But I'm kind of doing it. And I'm also, what I'm doing, what you can't see here is I'm doing it like this. So here's the full impression like that. And what I'm doing a lot is I'm doing it like, I'm just going like this. I'm using a smaller portion like this. So I'm stamping it at an angle like this, not great for your stamp positioners or something like that, you know, where you're doing flat applications all the time, you know, with your lid, you know, your platform, okay. So maybe with something like this, you throw it on an acrylic block if you want to go for kind of more of this textural pattern like this, okay. And you just kind of tap it around like this. And of course, you know, going like this, but, you know, a lid is not going to be easy. So, you know, I would recommend, you know, maybe for some smaller types of, um, textural types of elements like that, you know, try it on a, try it on a block, or uh, acrylic block if you haven't before. This one's on a wooden one, but, you know, um, I would use my acrylic block, but this one I just happen to have out right here. But do you see what this is kind of adding that shade in here? Let's go, let's have that um, uh, Beaver Lodge create a little bit of a shadow down here, okay. All right, you can kind of see the gist of it kind of coming in a little bit. All right. 
Yeah, I heard it was, uh, my, I was talking to my sister. Hello, Crystal Fire Creations. I heard uh, it was really hot up there in uh, Washington, like 90. Well, you can stamp, Genie. Just stamp, like, Arctic scenes, you know? Do like this scene right here, but do it all within your snowy kind of terrain and thus, from a psychological standpoint, um, achieve the relief that, uh, you know, you, uh, you are, you seek. <laughs> right? The hotter it gets, the cooler our uh, designs, you know, temperature-wise tend to look, maybe. Uh, Linda, you do everything well. Okay, let's see. All right. Okay, so okay, so down here, um, I'm trying to decide if I want to make that water or earthen, you know, or some of it water, you know, because that that dam there would be. Cre I'm gonna put this will be a, my lower pond down here. Okay. telling you folks watch that uh, if you have a chance I, like I said it, it might even be on uh, YouTube but watch that uh, beaver IMAX documentary it's just so charming I used to love going and watching um, um, IMAX movies um, at you know places like you know science centers and things like that and there I watched a lot of those movies many many times but the one that I watched the most um, was uh, the Beavers one, the Beaver documentary. A lot of those movies, it's not like you know, if you if you haven't seen those types of movies, but you know, you'll get a movie showing at a different, you know, like a you know Museum of Natural History or Science Center or something like that, and it might show for like five years. <laughs> you know. It, <laughs> There's not a lot of those types of, you know, documentary IMAX format movies out there. And, uh, yeah. Okay, so anyways, you guys see that? So it's kind of looking a little shimmery. I, let me change my exposure here a little bit. I'm really exposed high for this um, stream. Okay, all right. So there's that. No, I'm using a really light tone of blue too okay this is like a really super light okay so it's a good one to start off with because you don't have to make a gigantic commitment to that color or that value of tone okay yeah yeah no linda you can't say that you don't uh, do anything you know everything well at this point in time that's what occurred to me, um, I don't know, when looking at the some of your last pieces. I mean, it's been a while, but I'm talking about like like every aspect. Uh, oh yeah, it was the it was your series of uh, it was your series of that uh, uh, whatever rebirth that that forest fire thing. All right, all right, so that gives me, see, so just start off light like that, okay? If you start off light like this, I'm gonna do something that you shouldn't do, okay? That no one's going to do this, but you could just go like this. Right? <laughs> Don't do that, though. But my point is, if you start off with something like that light, okay, there's, like, there's, it's almost like impossible to do anything wrong, okay? So that's like when I'm building up from lighter tones and working into my darker tones, you know? It's, there's hardly anything that, you know, that can happen. You know, I mean, you can drop a pad or something like that on there, but I'm talking about from the coloring process. It's really hard to do anything kind of, that comes up kind of unexpectedly and undesirably, okay? I mean, it can. But it's, it, you know, if you're not kind of watching what you're doing and if you're concentrating on only one small portion at a time and you're kind of not looking at the overall, but, you know, just in general, you know, 
when you're working kind of incrementally, um, you know, you're really taking a lot of the, uh, I don't know, the... I don't know if the word is risk, you know, because I don't see it as that at all. But um, now see, I'm going darker now. Okay, and so this is showing up, you know, as a darker value right there. And that was going to create a lot more contrast like that. It might look strange, you know, in the beginning like this, but, you know, we haven't even started coloring yet. You know, I'm just kind of doing this little bit of texturing on here. All right, okay. And like I said, I, I want this to be a real jeweled kind of a lively illuminated piece this time, you know, with, so I, I probably won't, well, <laughs> I don't want to say it right now. I was going to say I won't go too dark, but again, I don't know if going darker in certain areas is going to kind of, uh, you know, enhance certain other areas that are lighter than it, then I might do that. Okay. Okay, so going with this. I might, okay, I'm gonna start going with the, just the coloring, I think. I think that's about as far as I wanna go. But see, this is, you know, it's kind of a little bit of a head start, right? And you're getting the textural pattern of that water while you're at it, so it's like you're, I don't know if it's like killing two birds with one stone, but in some ways it, I don't know, you know, it's really taking care of a lot of the, uh, the water for me like that. I'll probably add on a lot more, but, um, my point here is that you don't necessarily have to. Because... You know, a lot of it has been kind of established like that. So there we go, like that. I think that's probably the most I've done with this water pattern stamp in a long time. First of all, I'm not working this big. Now, I mean, some of you too, like Froggy Fresh, you use the uh, sea, Seaside Cove up in their uh, sky. I mean, I've seen people use like this water pattern stamp, you know, for sky textures up there. I mean, you can get like this type of thing going up there and it'd be like clouds or something like that. Um, anyway, uh, hello bugs. I didn't see, uh, for anyone else that's joined in. Hello. Thanks for joining in. Happy, happy Fridays. Hope you had a nice, pleasant week. Uh, so glad to see everyone. I've been really itching to get back on. I almost got, came on here. I don't know. It was a few days ago, but then I, I got stuck doing something else. And, and I had to work on inventory a few days in there too. I had to replenish. All right, but look how, look how dull that got there. Okay, so um, those, so see that right in there, but that will provide a pretty decent foundation. If, if you guys just joined in, um, I was going for a lot more yellows and things like this in my trees, but what I was saying is I'm going to be using a lot of these types of pens. So I want this to look real kind of, shimmery and almost um uh yeah the beaver dam yeah it's a stampscape stamp um i haven't used it very much over the years i have a nighttime scene i think with them and i don't know if i've done like a real daytime you know illuminated one okay so i don't know if i should go with this one yet maybe i should go with a little bit more Okay, I'm taking my advice here. I'm gonna go with the, here's Summer Sky. Okay, that was the first color that I stamped in here with. Let's go with Summer Sky here. Okay, I'm just going to, see, I've kind of given myself kind of my lighting scheme in here already, just by kind of focusing on my shadow areas, okay? Let's see those little passageways. You know, I kind of blocked off down here a little bit, but you know. I won't go too much darker than this, but um, let's reiterate that. Okay, so I can use my pad, but this is just so much faster than using this. Like that. 
an impatient hard stamper. Well, maybe you're used to using you kind of maybe you okay, maybe you've you know, you've used a lot of larger stamps or something like that. So you do create muscle memory over time. Um, so be careful with the, your smaller, more kind of delicate imagery. Stampscape stamps aren't really small and delicate, but I mean, something like this, you just definitely want to use less pressure than, you know, something like this with a lot of, you know, a huge amount of surface area, which is the beaver dam. Okay, so let's go in here, okay? Let's, let's just go in and um, see I'm reiterating what's already down on the surface here, okay? I'm trying to create this little bit of transitioning streak that goes like that. See, that that's the most important part right there. It's not going in here like that and then coming up like that because then I have that right there, okay? So it's kind of going like this and then you're kind of wiping up, okay, like that. So just kind of use that same type of kind of application so I'm touching down and I'm doing that streak like that, okay? And that's we that's you know how you get those transitions. And I'm not really changing up, you know, from doing that with I don't know most applications of media. It's kind of this transitioning thing, you know, where you're going from the darker areas into the light, you know. And this is just water, so it's especially, you know, kind of a uh, true for that type of thing, you know, where you get this transitioning tone petering off into nothing, but skies can be the same way like that. Grass, a little, you know, grass too. Um, but on grass, I might not go, you know, as delicate or something like that. But I mean, it's not a delicate approach or something like that. I'm just going, I'm just going like this and like that, you know. Okay. So this is kind of your base coat, you know? I mean, you know, we already have some tones in here, you know, from the uh, the water pattern, but. It's like first color here. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm also going to bring this blue up into my mountains and background grass. Blue is a component of green, right? So, and I'll use that on my rocks in here as well. Okay, if I darken my rocks in here, the trees will be casting their shadows in there. You can leave some of their rocks light if you want to. I'm going to put it up in here. Okay, come back into here. If I just go with, like, say, green in the green grass without blue, I mean, it can look okay, but I think it gives a little bit more continuity if you have a similar tone or a common tone amongst those um, areas like that. All right. Okay, so we'll create a little bit of a shading in here. Some of these areas back in my mountains um, might be easier to get to and more detailed with um, the alcohol ink markers. Okay, so I'm not going to go up in here too much. And plus, I want that area in the background to be kind of light. So, uh, okay. Reink here. Oh, uh, let me see. Um, I'm trying to think of the code for the beaver. It's in, it's in the team three. Three something, I think, three fourteen or something like that. I know, I know a lot of the codes of my stamps, but some of the more kind of obscure ones I tend to forget a little bit. Okay, I'm streaking some of my mountain tops a little bit, so I need to be careful about that. Those were some of the last things I stamped in there, and they're also in black. Okay, so they're a little bit wet still. But so be it. I'm always using Genie, Genie as an example here. Genie has like so much movement in the scenes anyways, you know. So it would just add to it, having kind of a little streak coming off of something. It can look like wind or something like that, okay? All right, so anyways, the benefits of reinkers. I have a video out called that. You know, it's just, um, you can get like your applications of your, especially your base coat tones so much faster just by applying some, um, 
reinker fluid onto your sponge, in this case it's a paper towel, whatever you know, ink applicators you're using, um, because you're, you want to go for a decent amount of coverage in the blended tone type of technique, you know, not in other types of techniques, but... Um, and when you're utilizing um, that amount of ink on there, you pulp the paper. You're not only just coloring your scene, but you're also kind of um, getting a lot of the pulp of the paper, on, you know, next to the surface, a little bit moist, and that'll make your darker tones to come much easier to blend in, okay? By having that pulp a little bit wet. It just makes things so much easier. I started doing that in my workshops I've mentioned before. And when I started doing that, it was like, um, people that were doing it for the first time, you know, I'd really be working with them, you know, in the class just to get everything blended in really well with their first, you know, um, scene that they were doing. But when I started using that um, reinker fluid, and at the time we were using the uh, stylus tools, which aren't around anymore, but you know, you can use this, but I just didn't have to. Um, <laughs> I don't know if, I don't know if my instructional part of the blending process went down from like, you know, high intensity or whatever, you know what I mean? Getting everyone getting that. I mean, everyone got it before, you know, cause I would just tell them to use, you know, a lot more ink and they would be applying it, you know, right out of the pads onto their scenes, but when we just started doing that first um, color with, it, at the time it was the seashells, aqua, ocean aqua, and then it became later on Adirondack lights, aqua, and now, you know, I just tell people to use any any kind of light tone. So on here, um, uh, like an antique linen would be good too. That's a warmer tone in the, uh, the distress inks or something like that, but that would be a good one to lay down on here too. As a matter of fact, I think I will. Okay, so let's, okay, let me do that a little bit later. Or should I do it now before I get too dark? If, if I get too dark with these blues right here, by the time I go on with the um, antique linen, it might start blending in with some of those darker blues. So let me get that down first as more of a base layer coat. Okay, so antique linen, this is going to be a real warm scene, or that's what I'm going for, the spirit of it. So your dull tones, it doesn't have to be Distress Ink Antique Linen, you know, just some kind of warmer tinge color, but in a lighter value, whatever lightest value you have, um, go with something like that. You know, uh, Memento has like a desert sand. I'm looking at my pads right now. Um, there was a Distress, uh, an what was that? Paper, antique, pa I don't know. They're all kind of, kind of so, torn. Does anyone help me out here? I don't know. It was some other paper, something paper. <laughs> I think it was an even lighter version of uh, the antique linen. But you know what I mean? Any of those things would be fine for this, uh, this base layer um, tone. And you can add that in your completely cool tone scenes too, you know. But, you know, basically just lighter tones. Okay, now this one, I don't, I'm out of my reinker. I keep saying this. I've been saying this for months. Hit the like button so that, you know, I can hit get uh reinkers <laughs> all right so here's some warm tone right here okay now i still want this light through here i want this you know to be a passage of light but we'll make it a little bit of a warm light and then this okay so we're talking about kind of visual continuity between grass and water by having blue in there but so these are warm tone um trees right and they're going to be even warmer with my use of the uh paint pens um, but I'm going to bring some of that warmth down into this water area, okay? And then, you know, uh, and this would be a perfect color, like a base layer color for these, uh, you know, some of these uh, wooden logs in here, you know, these pieces of wood and whatnot, okay? But I don't know, can you see that right there? Is that coming through? All right. And you just kind of streak it through like that, okay? I'm not trying to color this in like this, okay? So just kind of keep it more kind of natural in terms of the uh, application of it, okay? About like so, and I'll throw it back in my mountains as well. Okay, oh, on the lodge right here too. So it's, it's barely a commitment, you know, to that warmer tinge. See that warmer tinge starting to come into play there? 
Okay, so you can just kind of build it up like that, and that's a, like the perfect color to start that off with. Again, you know, if I can just take this and I just go like this all over it, I could, and it, you know, it's not going to be, um, you know, look, you're not gonna ruin the scene. And that's, again, it's by starting off with such lighter tones like that, okay? Now, I want this area in here to be really warm and vibrant and stuff like that. It's looking really cool and dark right now, so I'm going to really warm that up. It's not making it lighter, but it's making it warmer, okay? All right. Now, when I start using the, uh, the paint pens on here, you're going to think, oh, my God, you ruined the scene, you know? And sometimes I think that, too, when I haven't used those pens in a while. But I want to go for that. I want to go for this real shimmery texture on this. So this is like you know, going to be so, so much of a subsurface for the end result in, in theory. I don't know, maybe, it, you know, maybe it'd be better if I don't use the pens because I kind of like this too, but, but I do want to go for that real shimmery look in here with these types of things in here. And it's just going to make the trees look so much better. The trees are kind of, you know, the trees should be the star of the scene right now. Along, you know, co-starring, you know, co-starring with the, the Beaver Lodge too. But, um, but right now they're looking really anemic, so that's where those pens are really going to help out. Okay. Let's see. Old paper, thank you. I know it was something like that. Antique paper, all you know what I mean? All those names like that. <laughs> Uh, I, I think I have the old paper, but it was so similar, I thought, to um, the antique linen. I just chose the antique linen. It was just darker. The old paper was like even, I think it's even lighter in, in tone and maybe a little bit less warm, you know, or something like that, right? Now, if I never, if I never got the antique linen and if I only had the old paper, I'd probably be using the old paper right now. That would have been my kind of go-to kind of warm tone base layer color, you know. Um, but, I don't know. The antique linen for me won out. Okay, so let's go in. Let's start building up some more tones. Let's go with the Bahama Blue, okay. That looks like it's, I don't know, maybe it doesn't look like it's too much darker, but it looks like it's quite a bit darker than your summer sky, okay. But it, I don't know. I find these memento inks I find that um, the indexing on the uh, the pads look um, darker than what they look like to me when uh, freshly applied. Uh, distress inks for 40% off at Hobby Lobby. I don't think it's Bobby Lobby there. I get that. Unless, I don't know, is Bobby still on? Bobby, do you have a store? <laughs> Maybe Bobby's gone. Okay. But that's pretty good, 40% off, my gosh. Okay, so this is, yeah, it's quite a bit darker like that. See my shadow down there? Okay, so really, you know. Okay, now at this point in time, I've mentioned this on other videos too, uh, and when, especially when I'm teaching workshops, um, when they get to like these darker tones, I'm saying, okay, watch out with your darker. Everyone gets all this lighting right here with their lighter tones. And then what they do is they get kind of more familiarized and really comfortable with this kind of application process, okay? But sometimes they apply the darker tones, the mid-tones, the darker tones in the same areas or at the same speed as they did with the lighter tones. But the lighter tones, when you go with a streak like this, by the time you get to the end of the streak, it's almost invisible because it's such a lighter color to begin with. So if anyone ever loses their light, it's not usually with the first one or two colors. It's always with those mid-tones to darker tones, okay? And, it, I mean, they might do that, you know, initially, but, I mean, you know, they stop doing that. But it's, you know, it's, it's that comfort um, with that. And I know what they're talking about because, you know, when you're doing something like this, we're talking about a repetitive movement, okay? And we do create this kind of muscle memory, okay? So maybe, I don't know, maybe what it looks like when I think about it, maybe it's a longer streak like this, you know, coming into your, now this is a big scene, okay, but maybe the streaks are longer like this, but maybe when I get into my darker tones or something like that, maybe the strokes become shorter like this, where they're like this, 
you know, with the with the lighter ones where they're entering the scene um, farther. All right. All right, let's see. I can come into these trees here. If I wasn't covering over these trees with a lot of paint, I'd worry about going into them with the blue, but I'm not worried about that at all. Well, a little bit. I don't want to go like this across it or something like that. Okay. A little bit of darker edge like that. Four corners, you know, for a little bit more of a kind of a a framing device here. One of the things is too, um, you know, the image blended together, but from coming a visual standpoint like this, it, it's really going to, I'm going to move into much more of the shadows and things like that to really unify everything a lot more. You know, like, I mean, this really stands out. It's not really blended. It's not really sitting in the scene quite yet. And that's where these um, shadow kind of applications, the darker colors will come into play. And we'll see if we'll do that with, uh, you know, the inks now, alcohol inks, maybe in colored pencil. Like I said, I've done this on the satin. For those of you if, uh, that have joined in after I mentioned it, this is a seven and a half by 10 inch, just so that I can have something to mat it on, you know, an eight and a half by 11. And um, it is on the semi-gloss, um, what they call Mohawk Everyday Digital White Coated Silk. It's a semi-gloss cardstock, so it's a little, little bit more satiny than, you know, just matte. But it's a lot closer to matte than glossy, than a glossy cardstock, okay? Um, so, you know, so that it can take um, some degree of colored pencil work if you choose to use that on something like this. All right, so coming around, let's... One of the things that um, always occurs to me, anytime you have a heavy kind of object like this, like a, like a mountain or like a cabin or something like that, structures especially, or like a large tree, um, Anchor it down with the use of shadows. Otherwise, it looks like it's kind of just floating in there. And it, it, you don't have to have a, like a huge shadow on it, you know. It can just be a little bit of tone at the base of it if you're working on a, you know, like I said, a piece of matte paper. You can do it with a little bit of a colored pencil or something like that if you want to. Um, but anything like that, it'll sit in the scene more. And it'll give it, um, you know, that structure and mass and visual weight um, that you want. Um, an opacity, you know, if it was really light down here, you're saying that the light is just kind of showing right through that big, you know, collection of, in this case, logs here. But anything that would be casting a shadow, remember that type of thing. And, you know, it doesn't have to be anything too elaborate. You know, if you put a little bit of shading around on these areas like that, and then you can kind of build it off from there, you know, as you become more comfortable with um, lighting through the use of uh, shadows, shade, shadows, you know, value, darkness. All right, let's see. Oh, the nanometer, huh? Hmm, that'd be interesting. They probably, you know, they, there's more uh, kind of a uh, descriptive types of things um, in the art world than in the crafting um, media world, for sure. Like, if, um, if like these pads or something like this were being sold in the art market, what they'd have on the back of it, they would have like a rating of uh, like a one through five light fastness rating. You know, in terms of, um, you know, how prone they would be to fading, you know, if exposed with uh, light or something like that. So <coughs> things like uh, uh, watercolors. Do Copic markers have a light fastness rating on them? Does anyone know? 
Copic markers. I don't. Th I don't think Copic markers. Copic markers. The um, they were probably they're probably more of a comp marker. You know, like doing comprehensive types of layouts. You know, than the end. You know, um, end all piece of artwork. You know, they're more of like uh, like those design or add markers or something like that. So I don't know if they would have a light fastness rating on the back of it, but um, I don't know. I'm kind of curious if they do. I think I think that was the light fastness rating. I think it was like a one through five or something like that in the art market. And again, it's, it's usually on those tubes, uh, those tubes of paints. Okay, so it's getting a little bit darker. You, the use of this—it's uh, kind of more of a I don't know, like a navy blue. My um, page here is getting totally dry so as I'm applying this it feels like it's going on really rough. I can go back in with my um, reinker again, that summer sky and kind of give it a a little bit more of a, uh, a coating on here again. So I've mentioned that before. If you're doing this type of application right here, it gets a little bit stiff as that base layer kind of dries so it feels really kind of, you know, um, scratchy, you know, here. I don't know. If I had the microphone down here, it might be drawing, you know, kind of driving people nuts, you know, in terms of that kind of real chalky, you know, on a chalkboard type of, you know, it's not that bad, but um, I'm kind of getting that little bit of a feeling here working on it. I don't know, maybe it depends on how much more I'm going to do down in this water. I'm thinking about going to the Caribbean blue and maybe that's it as far as my dye based things go. Yeah, I I would say that's a that's probably a yeah that would be the vantage point, Linda, huh? Looking down, especially with these trees down here, like that. Yeah, I agree. Okay, let's see here. Okay, one of my favorite colors, uh, this Caribbean blue Marvy pad. All right. It's a really bright, warm tone blue. Okay. That really changed it a lot um, down in that water area. All right, okay, let's see. Okay, I haven't used colored pencils in a long time, so what's going through in my mind is, okay, if I'm going to add in some more dye-based inks, you have to do that before you do the colored pencils because, the, you know, the dye-based inks aren't going to stick to wax if you use um, that in here. So any type of water-based, dye-based applications of either tone or impressions, you know, probably a good idea to do that before you hit it with, you know, colored pencils in certain areas, so uh, that is the consideration right now. Let's see, let's use a little bit of a greenish tinge down here. Okay, this is gonna look really bizarre. Uh, don't panic, <laughs> but I wanna make that area down there a little bit brighter. Okay, maybe I'll, maybe I'll use my kind of more earthy greens like this. I was going to go, I was thinking about the Marvy number 11 like super bright green, but look at this, I'm digging through pads because I haven't used these in a while, but let's go with some of this down here. Okay, I want to bring this, I want to make this more green right here. I 
Okay, so let's start off the pear tart first, just because it's lighter. Okay, I don't have a, like a formula for this. It just has, happens to be the lightest one of the greens that I have right here, okay? All right, so let's see. Right, so that little tinge of green down there. Okay, let's do that same thing in the background. Let's warm that area up a touch. Or I don't know, it might be a lot like that back in there. It's kind of given a little bit of a livelier look to that area. And again, I'm seeing it as a base layer. I'm not seeing it as like the final, you know, color in that area. Like, oh my God, I, you know, that's it. It's it's a base layer color. You know, it's like oil painting or something like that. You know, it's like putting down a wash or something like that. And then you build up on that. You know, you kind of go um, thin to thick, as they called it. More of a, I don't know, traditional, traditional painting. Not like a, not like a, not like Van Gogh or something like that, you know, working in, in like impasto. All right. Um, is that? Although we were talking about impressionism though on this one, right? <laughs> uh, with the pens, we haven't gotten to the impressionism yet. Okay, and this is a green, darker green like that, okay. Thanks so much, Froggy Fresh. Um, I didn't know that that black up there did smudge a little bit, Genie. The, the other colors here, you know, like that, I, I haven't really been going over it too much like that. It's been more of like a tapping motion, so, uh, didn't have any problem with that in there. Okay, so, let's see, that has been used... I'm I'm planning on doing a lot more kind of rendering on here with colors and media so that I haven't done like to the extreme like I want to do it in this one on, in a while okay so I'm just kind of going through in my head kind of what I need to do cuz I'm, I'm a little bit out of practice here okay so I'm going to add in some additional um tone down here some shadows around in this area okay we're going to anchor this piece right in here a little bit more. Okay. About like this. And we'll add some shadows. Okay, so this tree is casting some shadows, so I'm going darker down here. I think I'm going to have to go to black in those shadow areas. But And again, but I was thinking, man, should I do that with the... Um, should I do that with the uh, colored pencils, or should I do it with the with inks like this, or both, you know. It's a, it's a dilemma. <laughs> it's one of those, uh, it's one of those stamping dilemmas, but it's like, you know, if you do one over the other, it's not like, oh, that was the wrong thing to do. It was just like, oh, maybe this, you know, doing it the other way could have saved me a little bit of time or something like that. Okay, let's see. Um... Okay, um, well, that's a big jump in tone from black, from this blue to that black. Let me go, okay, I'm gonna have to go with the, my Marvius here. See, my mementos didn't get very much darker in here, so I'm gonna have to go with the Marvies. Okay, the Marvies are a thinner ink, okay, and they can penetrate um, the surface easier as a result of that thinner viscosity, okay. So I don't want to I don't want to build it out too much, but I just want to anchor down in here, okay? So let's start off, and I plan on going to black. Um, so, but let's make a intermediate um, color first, 
And you don't have to go with the salt, you know, straight on version of this. You can always kind of wipe it off a little bit, you know, to get a drier version of it if you need to. So I'm just going with a really thin application of it down here at the base like that. Can you see a little bit of a dark? Yeah, you can see a little bit of a darker tone like that. Something like that? Something like that, okay. Yeah, maybe a little bit more. <laughs> okay, and then the distance. I'll bring some of those rocks right in that area right in there. Okay, this little area right there, there's not too much of a dis differentiation between rock and water, so I'll put a lot more tone right at the base like that and kind of anchor that down. Because it's not, you know, there's no sh shading in that rock because I just used a portion of the top of the boulders with lichen, so I'm kind of, you know, creating that... Uh, you know, that transition into the water just through the use of some tone right here, okay? And I can access it easier upside down, so I've turned my scene upside down like that. All right, well, uh, let's see, let's do this on the Beaver Lodge as well here. I don't know why, but working on these kind of larger scenes, it seems like there's um, so much more application of a uh, color than there is on a a piece like a quarter the size. <laughs> I don't know why that would be, you know? Anyone know? <laughs> okay, let's see here. Uh, Prussian blue, one of my favorite blues. I think some of you have it out there, right? We brought up Prussian blue, and a couple of you had it on one of these uh, live streams at one point in time. A lot of people don't have Marvy ink pads, okay? And then this Prussian blue, this number 29 Prussian blue. I was surprised, at the, you know, there were a couple people that had it. But see how much darker that is, like so much darker, you know? And it doesn't look like it's that much darker than this one, does it? But see, that's where you have to be careful about those really darker tones like that. All right, I'm going to I'm going to do something here. I'm going to put some of this uh summer sky right in there with the um Prussian blue because it's it's grabbing right now. It's not giving me a good streak. So you just add in a little bit of tone with it and there you have it. Off to the races again, right? Let's see how easy that blends in like that. All you have to do is just add in that you know, kind of lighter tinge in there, okay? So you don't have to go with the Prussian blue re okay? All right, now that's a little, looking a little harsh there, right in here. But again, remember, I'm going to be adding in the white pigment ink at the end, which all kind of mellows it out anyway, so... But this will provide me with um, kind of a decent foundation for that extra tone. You're not going to be able to see that white pigment ink anywhere if I don't have the area behind it, um, you know, at least a little bit darker um, than the white of the ink like that, okay? All right, so let's go in here like so. Okay. Scene like that. Okay, I think we are ready for black. <laughs> it's been a long road. A watery road here to get to black. 
Okay, let's see. Um, oops, my mouse is out of a... My, oh, no, it's connected again. Bob Ross used what color all the time? Oh, what, Prussian blue? Linda Bystrom's afraid of Prussian blue. It is really dark and it is really thin too, as far as the Marvy one goes. The Marvy Prussian blue, it's the, the viscosity, I think, chemistry wise, is thinner than any of the other things. So when you put it down there, it really makes its mark fast too. So it's not only dark, but it penetrates and applies really fast. Okay, here we go here with the black, okay. I start applying it usually in kind of my darker areas at first like that, you know, because then I can kind of adjust. I'm putting it on some of my rocks here. So see some of my trees are casting a shadow down in here. Okay, now one of the things I was mentioning earlier is that, you know, when you start applying a lot of different tone in areas, okay, it's starting to look kind of muddy in terms of um, the textural variation in here. It's all soft, okay, and that's where, you know, some other imagery will come into play or areas right around in here with the paint pens and stuff like that, adding in some kind of crisper elements like that. So I get the tonal variations like that, but I want the textural contrasts in there as well. I want something nice and sharp in that area. And that's where like these trees like this, or I might have like an overhanging tree limb coming in here with maybe with some fall tones on it or some, you know, I might have a branch coming in from this side, like in the foreground, okay? To add in that extra depth again, because it does, I mean, you know, we've added a lot of color in these areas and it's all looking... <sighs> I'm having trouble with my camera, like, focusing in on these days. Yeah, it's not... Okay. But like in this area right in here, um, it's, you know, it's really starting to build up with that tone in there, so... Um, yeah. Okay, let's go like that. You know, one of my favorite colors, I don't see it. I don't know if anyone has anything similar in crafting inks, but one of my favorite um, colors um, when I was in uh, art school, I loved um, ultramarine blue. That was one of my favorite blues. And the ultramarine blue um, really reminded me of um, the, the Prussian blue, Marvy ink. Um, just, it was so rich and deep of a blue. Um, but again, it was really dark. But I used it. I, I think I used it quite a bit back then. But anyway, see this right here where it's starting to uh, kind of anchor down a little bit. Um, uh, it's anchoring down that uh, the beaver dam here. See that right there? See, it anchored it, it really anchored it down a lot like that. Now I'm coming up into the dam as well here, so I need to get some tone up in that too. Or maybe I should leave that. Again, it's like, you know, I'm kind of uncertain if I should leave that more for the, uh, the colored pencils or not. Not sure. Okay, let's see. All right. Sorry, I keep going out of the frame like this. It's working this, these larger pieces like this. Okay. I think that's it, yeah. It's very, that Prussian blue is super pigment rich. That's one of my things with a lot of these um, inks from uh, certain companies. Um, I love all the colors, you know, that that are offered, but sometimes the pigment um, to whatever binder ratio, it seems 
low, you know, so um, a lot of the colors to me look kind of anemic. I love the color choices that we have out there these days, but the um, the richness of tone just doesn't seem to be there. And I've speculated, I've wondered if it's because of the amount of binder that's needed so that um, these inks don't, you know, they're, they're real thick so that, so that they don't run out of the, the pads or something like that. But um, yeah, I want richer tones using um, whatever existing colors are out there um, without having to just apply over and over and over again. Okay. But yeah, that's exactly it. Pigment rich. That's a perfect, uh, yeah, description of a uh, Prussian blue. Okay, so adding in some extra tones down here, anchoring these trees down with a little bit of shadow work. Okay. All right, and this tree's in here. And I'm just going in, this is black right here, but I'm starting to use kind of a, a very dry version of it. So it's just applying a little bit of, I need to change my exposure here again, I think. Okay, yeah, that's a little bit more like it there. Okay, so, um, I knew what I was getting into with this big piece like this, but Kind of that's the direction I wanted to go in right here. All right, let's start using some colored pencils. Unless, uh, unless all of you are like dozing off. <laughs> I need to, I need to eat dinner here too pretty soon. But let me get, let me get a little preliminary um, toning down this. I think we're going to come into this with some additional imagery, and I'll do the, uh, the final kind of accessory types of touches on this with the white pigment inks and. Um, the acrylic paint pens in here, but let's get all, you know, or the majority of the coloring done right now. Now, I don't have to do a lot of them here. Again, you know, like that, I've created a lot of tonal patterns in this, you know, this dam and the lodge already, okay? And I've colored them using the black and the brown, so that gave me a big head start in terms of, you know, the utilization of color on here, okay? So, you know, just going with a couple of different colored pencils like this. Uh, I don't know if I, let me see if I have a lighter one too. Something like this, okay? Nothing specific, I'm just going with whatever I think would kind of match, you know, what I'm going after. And I'm not going after full saturations of this either. I'm just going for kind of lighter touches on it. Oh! So let's go, let's do it with the, uh, Let's go cross media again too. Let's hit it with some of the um, the alcohol inks too. Okay, so you can use your Copics or whatever on those too. But just kind of going for some variation. You see like these little, you know, trunks in here, you know, you can hit it with a little bit of tone. And when you're hitting it with something that's so light like that, you're not making a gigantic commitment to that object or area so it's just kind of nice to be able to go in and kind of experiment with that remember to leave some variation on here you know so you have um, some lighter areas in there so that it looks real three-dimensional and things will stick out a little bit more or if you want like this log to be partially toned in you can do that coming out here and again, this is, you know, some shadow work down here. It's just a little bit darker, so I can add it down here. These bushes are capturing some of that shade. See, it's just a little bit darker, right? So you're just doing these little incremental types of applications right in here. Um, let's say the lighting is kind of coming in from in here. So maybe on this side of the lodge, it's going to be darkened in like that, okay? Come down here, you can come into your shadow work down here. This is a brownish gray, but going into that water like that, you know, it's not going to make it look brown in the water. It just looks a little bit darker because this area in the water is darker than this color. So you don't need to worry about that. You can just come in there. Now, like I said, if I'm going with a much darker tone like this, I'm going to be much more careful about that. But see, there's like these little areas on this rock right here. You know, I can go in and do like some detailed coloring on that. And uh, I can leave some areas illuminated, you know, where a, like a paper towel maybe isn't the best tool. <laughs> uh, 
like a wadded up paper towel for some reason that's not the most uh kind of uh you know uh you know uh ideal thing for like super detailed work for some reason i have no idea why all right but see that right in there i mean doesn't look like a little bit more varied okay some of these branches stick out a little bit more so i think than others um yeah okay so that was that here's a little bit more of a warmer tinge so maybe some of these you know pieces of wood in here or maybe it's a different type of wood something like that see instead of coloring this whole thing going all the way across there maybe i'll just hit it a little bit like that like this piece of log that's kind of underneath these other ones i can hit it in the shadows in here and you know you can warm up your shadows a little bit too and darken them at the same time you know shadows don't always have to be kind of uh like cool you know they might be warm tones or something like that we can hit it down here a little bit more in the shadows down here this oh this rock up here i think can use a little bit of a warm tinge you see that right there like that okay shadows being cast by some of these trees eh, i don't know if that's the ideal color for that i'll come back into that uh, let's hit it with something like this green, okay? So you just mix and match, okay? So you get that green over the top of that brownish tinge gives it a little bit more of an earthy, you know, background. Now, I know this is a little out of focus here, but okay, there we go. You just keep blending it in, you know, to your, whatever your preference, you know. Okay, warm it down here. Okay. And let's see. Um, I like how that little area in the background looks a little bit more with these trees casting some shadows like that. So that kind of anchors them down a little bit more. Kind of like so. Boy, this, this is really giving me a lot of coverage here. I'm going to have to just keep layering it until... Maybe it's, I don't know, maybe what it's doing is, as I apply this down, maybe it's kind of lifting off some of that tone off of the background and just, you know, reading as, where did that real light green go again? Okay, so add that down, darker tone, blend out with a lighter one like that. And it'll blend out just fine. As long as you hit it, I don't know if it'll blend out if you let it dry overnight or something like that and totally get embedded. But while it's kind of still wet, you know, it can go into solution just fine. Okay, now remember, white, opaque, you know, misty, you know, kind of things are going to be applied into this area. So, again, I'm making things a little bit brighter and more intense and sharper and harder in certain areas with that in mind, okay? I want that contrast to be applied in there. So, again, I'm not looking at every step of the way as kind of like the final result, you know? So, um, you know, until I get to that final result, really, is when I start thinking about that, you know? So those final applications like that. But it's kind of, it's kind of rounding into form a little bit more. Uh, yeah, there'll be a part two. I think I'm going to, um, yeah, you know, we, Crystal File is going to bed in, uh, you know, at, you know, in a, in a minute. So, uh, whenever she goes to bed, that's, that's when all these videos end. <laughs> I'm joking, but yeah, yeah. It's like, you know, a lot of people are on, uh, you know, Eastern Standard Time. I don't know if, if anyone's overseas or something like that. You know, where it's like 4 a.m. now or something like that. Um, Jeannie, Jeannie, I'm, I'm surprised you didn't put you, make you comatose already. Okay, here, I want to do something like this, too. Okay, so here's, well, let me see. Okay, so here's a little bit of pink, right? <laughs> I wish I had a lighter version like that. I need a dull, like a super pale pink. Is this one like that? Let me see, what is this called? It's called milky pink. This is like white. No, okay. okay. I'm going to put some of this in my water right here, okay? Can you see that at all? You can see a little tinge, right? Eh. Let's see. Okay, I'm trying to avoid my, um, my, 
uh, antique linen, okay? Or I was thinking of an old paper again. Okay, so, so this little pinkish tinge, so it's giving it a little bit of a value variation. I don't know if you can see that. Can you see that at all? Is that picking up at all on the, uh, your video? The benefits of really pale, pale values to use is not something we've always had in the, uh, in the, you know, whatever, the stamping world, you know, as far as accessories go like that. Okay, good night, uh, Crystal Fire. Thanks for joining in. Good to see ya. Okay, so here's that other pink right here. That was a little bit too harsh, so I'm going to blend that out with the lighter version again, okay? About like so. Okay, so we have those little tinges of, you know, extra color in here. I don't think we'd look at this color and say, oh my god, look at that pink in there, but I like that little tinge of it in there, like about like so. And I'm going to add that in some of my shadowy areas within this wood. Not that I want pink wood, but it just has that kind of that tinge of it in there, okay? Like about like so. For that variation, some shadows down in here, and the trees. All right, let's try some things with our colored pencils here. Yeah, yeah, Genie, it's just a you know, that little tinge of a. I don't know what we've done in the water there. The water was, you know on a color wheel or something like that. It's like this little area. We have blues and then we go into a little bit of the bluish green. But then what we're doing was we're taking it down this way into a little bit of the violets in here where that purple pink overlaps the blue, it looks violet. And then you have that pink in that just straight white area and it reads more as like just straight pink. So I like those little subtle types of things that you can do with, um, uh, there's little hints of uh, color changes like that. Okay, so this is uh, just some colored pencils right here. Okay. I can add it a little bit more down in my shadows too. I'm kind of going with this really light application of it like this. And this is like for like some really detail, like these little branches, you know, bl uh, pieces of wood in here. See, I'm just going to come in here like this and tone them out a little bit more like that. I mean, I'm, I'm hardly being specific on any of these things. It's not like, oh my God, I went over the wrong branch or something like that, you know. Um, but just getting that little bit more variation in here. And for me, you know, it's one of those things, I tried to make this look as three-dimensional as possible in terms of the rendering, so I'm really trying to reiterate that kind of idea. Which, you know, just putting in like a little bit of extra tone, like say, I don't know, like this branch is all kind of uniform right now. I can just add a little bit of tone like that to it, you know. I don't know, it's fairly subtle. I don't know if I, you know, if any of this is reading at all here. But you can go like that. Here, I'll just kind of tone the red, you know, the back side of this one right in here a little bit more. And colored pencils are kind of translucent unless you put on a really thick layer of them. So you get the colors underneath, you're benefiting from the colors underneath, so you're not just co covering up everything that's, you know, come before. You know, you're benefiting from it because, you know, those things are showing right through this wax or this kind of, you know, airy kind of application of media like that. I, I'm not schooled at using pencils at all either. Okay, so this is my kind of application of them. Um, if anyone knows what they're doing with colored pencils, they're going to be like, 
much better informed as far as, uh, you know, what can be done on this, you know, that I'm probably not even thinking of. You know, the people that use these pencils all the time. Or even some, you know, they're going to be way better than I am at it. I'm kind of using them in the same way that I do. You know, you, you, the diabase things and the alcohol inks, I just kind of work, you know, from light tones and, you know, work incrementally darker where I want them. But the people that really know what they're doing with colored pencils, they're getting all kinds of, you know, that really awesome um, texturing with them, um, building up textures and so on and so forth. They're doing it on, you know, textured papers, linens, and watercolor paper and all that type of thing. Uh, which I don't know how to do. <laughs> I don't know how to do any of it, really. Okay, let's see. Adding in some shadow tones down here. Okay, I really want this thing to look... It's all kind of muddy looking right now, but again, um, we'll build that up with some additional textures. The, um, the paint pens are really going to look bizarre down here because they're going to be so light against this area that's gotten so dark in here already. Okay. Okay, let's see here. Uh, I can see... CM can see the pink, Linda, yeah. Genie will dream of stampscapes tonight. Well, your, I would say your use of the designs is so kind of, uh, I'm guessing kind of, it's all kind of, uh, it's like second nature. Because I can't even tell what designs have been used sometimes in your pieces. So it might be in your subconscious. <laughs> That's fun when, you know, they call it, you know, like in music, once you learn kind of a song or whatever in um, like stamping, you know, when you get really familiar with certain imagery or something like that, then you can just use it in your compositions, you know, like a, like a musician or something like that, where you can really groove with it. So if I haven't, I'm not grooving with, you know, certain types of images if I haven't used them in a while. Um, but I just try to fake it. <laughs> All right, so this this black here is working really great for my shadows down here because I can get like a really super delicate kind of application of it in a very condensed area. See, so that I feel that that looks like it's sitting in the scene a lot better now with the colored pencils. I don't know. I don't I don't use colored pencils too often. A lot of times I'm doing uh, you know a lot of other media. I, get, I don't know, colored pencils take a little bit longer, too. I mean, they're they're not hard to use. They're just, you know, you get, you know, a smaller application because they're a sharp tip type of medium. So you're applying, you know, unless you're using those colored pencil, you know, those sticks or something like that. Um, you know, you're getting just a, a really small application of it at a time. I don't know. I guess this isn't taking forever, though. I should use more colored pencils, I guess. I know a lot of you guys like using colored pencils, right? People might not believe it, but I do go for faster applications of media. You know, that's why I mostly use dye-based inks and not, you know, some, you know, so detailed as a colored pencil like this, where I'm going for this. But there's no doubt that, uh, you know. Certain tools, you know, are just a lot more conducive to, you know, uh, certain types of uh, looks and applications for whatever purpose you're going after. Like right here, see, I just kind of darkened this side of the mountain because I want to have this as my kind of light source right here. And, yeah, it's just so much easier to do it with the colored pencil than, I don't know, certain things maybe. I'm talking about for a real subtle type of uh, look. You know, you can get it faster with, you know, I can just go over it instantly with a brush marker, you know, but this is like, I don't know, like a, I don't know, whatever. It's like a 10% gray or something like that, like that in there. 
Huh. Okay, so I need to use, um, uh, you know, clayboard art tiles, stamp board more often. I need to use um, colored pencils more often. I need to learn how to use the stencils more often. I need to use the beaver dam more often. <laughs> I need to use the cloning machine, apparently, more often. If it existed, if one existed. Or we just need to, like, less sleep, maybe. Is that the solution? Where did Crystal Fire Creations go? She went to bed. You know, we're going to say, hey, just, you know, forget sleep. Go into, uh, go into dream debt. Okay, I'm spending a lot more time with this black p colored pencil than I anticipated because I like how it looks in here. It's kind of giving me some of the, uh, I don't know, it's kind of giving me some of the, uh, um, the detail back into these areas. I guess because this is a precision instrument, right? It's, it's a little tip, right? So it's kind of giving me a little bit more of that crispness, I guess. I'm just trying to, th I'm just thinking out loud here of why. It just seems to be resolving some of these areas just, you know, without going into, you know, some of the things that usually resolve those areas for me in terms of just covering them up. <laughs> you know, where you can't see them as much. My, my solution for um, a lot of things is the art of distraction. <laughs> Which I would highly, uh, you know, um, uh, recommend in terms of, uh, you know, the visual arts. Okay, so adding in like that, that looks a lot better. So yeah, just kind of like putting a little bit more tone in that whole area there, I think, right? Hmm. All right. Oh, you're taking a class that, uh, uh, with Prismacolors, huh? Let's see, I didn't read some of this here. <laughs> uh, okay, maybe, uh, yeah, do do one of those things. What do they call that? Um, uh, what is that? It's not active dreaming, but it's, uh, what is that? Uh, it's something dreaming. It's where you think of something before you go to sleep, and supposedly it's going to enter your subconscious, and you'll it'll be incorporated into your dreams, you know, for that. Or just uh, play, play, put my put my playlist on autoplay in the background and just go to sleep to it. <laughs> uh, Prisma colors, awesome. That's cool that there's class there. at stamp away. Um, yeah, yeah. The shadows are looking better, huh? Okay. Uh, this is um, the Prisma color set here. It's my. I think it's my college set because I didn't use these for a really long time. So this set of like, I don't know, 30 some odd for, you know, 30 some odd years is, you know, most of the pencils are still in tech, you know, I don't think I've gone, I don't know. What is it? Is this like a half stick now? I don't know. Yeah. The Prisma colors. So there weren't a lot of different brands back in the day, you know, of colored pencils. Maybe there were three or four, maybe these days just like, you know, 10 or 15 with, you know, certain, you know, many main brands out there, but, you know, Prismacolors, it was Prismacolors and a couple other brands back when, I don't know if, uh, Derwent had them at the time. It was like, um, I don't know. What were some of those other brands out there? Gr ah, Grumbacher. Nah, gr I don't think, I don't know. Grumbacher had it. 
I'm trying to think of some of those paintbrush um, companies, what those names were. <laughs> this is really kind of bringing, okay, this is a surprise for me. This is really kind of resolving a lot of areas in here where I usually see like right in here. I just came back in there. It's, it was all sharp, you know, and cut off in there. I put those trees in there to kind of obscure them. I came up there with the color, but this just blended it all in, you know? I still, I think I still want to, I, I definitely still want to use the, uh, you know, kind of the, the white pigment ink and things like that in here. But, um, and it'll probably be needed with, you know, my paint pen work in here, but this took care of a lot of shadow work in here. But again, you know, one of the things I did was I got to a color that wasn't too much darker than, or, or too much lighter than the black. So this is much easier for me to, to blend in here because it's not creating such a huge amount of contrast as if it would, you know, on a white piece of paper like that. So it just made it a, that one step darker, or two steps darker seem to do the trick. Now see, right, what I'm doing down here is I'm kind of bringing in some of this tone down here and making it a little bit darker down here where this kind of transitions into this area down here a little bit easier. Okay, or, or I don't know, whatever, more gracefully in terms of lighting like this, okay. So I think that looks a little bit better as well, like that. See, the thing that I wanted to get done with this um, beaver dam here was to incorporate it into the scene a little bit better. I want it sitting in the scene um, a lot more than it was before. And this kind of helped there like that. And again, it's just because this is a really big scene where this is like super prominent, you know. If it's like this section of it on a quarter page card or something like that where that, you know, I would be using it most of the time, then I might not be focusing on that so much, you know, or adding that level of detail in there. And I haven't stamped in, you know, um, like a whole big scene in a few days, so I'm spending a lot more time on this than maybe I normally would. Okay, adding a little bit of this green in here. Okay. Uh, you know, maybe the beaver chopped down a, you know, kind of a fresh one, or maybe this is some um, uh, algae or whatever growing on, you know, something like this too. But it's just bringing a little bit of continuity between all these other elements and that object. So it just doesn't stick out so, you know, so much in, you know, certain ways. All right, okay, I'm not gonna come into my, this area in here with colored pencil stuff because I still might want to be adding in some areas like certainly my beaver in here I don't want to put like a colored pencil you know swipe across that water in there and then I stamp my beaver and oh my god I, I just stamped my beaver over the top of like some wax and it didn't transfer on there that would be I don't want that happening at that point in time I, I should probably maybe I should stamp the beaver right now actually and then it'll be nice and dry by the time we conclude, you know, this um, scene in part two here coming up in some point in time. I do want some extra textures down in this water. This water, to me, still, it needs, um, I don't know, it needs like the shallows in here. So um, the, uh, like the tiny rocks small or something like that would be good in there. Okay. All right, this beaver is going to stand out a little bit right now because it's not going to be rendered like the rest of the scene, but let's get them stamped out in here. Okay. Gosh, it's been a while since I stamped this little guy. I think in the parting shot for um, that IMAX movie Beavers, is it's this crane shot that they have going up in the sky. They didn't have drones back then to use on uh, filming, so it's like a crane that they took out to this uh, area. And I think there's this, you know, as they're panning away, you know, looking down at this um, beaver ecosystem or something, I think the beaver's like swimming away like that. You know, I think I, I only noticed that like, uh, I don't know, after, uh, I don't know, two or three viewings of it. 
All right, so let's go. Let's go about right here. Don't smear this beaver is what I'm telling myself in my head at this point in time. All right, so like I said, he's not going to stand out because he's not rendered. I need to color him and stuff, you know, and add shading and ah. Okay, my camera's driving me nuts these days. Why aren't you focusing in? Uh, oh my gosh. So where is the focus on this? Okay, there we go. Sorry. Maybe I'm maybe I'm bringing it in too fast or something like that. Anyways, there there's a little beaver right there. <laughs> so in terms of scale, I think that one's that one's appropriate for me right there. And we'll render that off a little bit more uh later. Okay, so anyway, uh Okay, let's see where are there any questions here. Raising hand for robot. What's that mean? <laughs> um, we'll have to catch the repay. I'm so late. Yeah, Cindy, thanks for joining in. Yeah, this is coming uh, almost... Uh, we're almost done with the coloring portion of this. I have... I don't know where I am on this scene. It's, I'm probably about 75% of the way through, and I'm going to be adding in... Um, okay, th this is what... If you've, if you've joined in... Um, later than the first like five minutes. <laughs> I don't know when it was, but I'm going to be adding in um, some white uh, or some large um, paint pen additions into the scene, kind of in a fall type of uh, setting here in the aspen trees, okay? So it's going to be a lot brighter and more vivid in here and more active, kind of almost, like I said earlier, um, if I still do it, I'm starting to wonder about that impressionistic type of look in here because everything is so tightly rendered now. I don't know. We'll see where it goes, but I'm going to be bringing in some visual interest into these trees. And it's going to look nuts because we're going to see all these colored dots in here. And it's like, you know, going to look like, I don't know what it'll look like. It looks like electric light parade or something like that at Disneyland or something like that. But we'll blend it in a little bit more and then we'll blend in some additional um, mist and fog coming off of the water, you know, down in here, down in the background and everything like that. And that'll kind of mellow things out. That's that's the way it'll go in kind of theory. <laughs> I hope it does an application because I want these trees to really be um, kind of sparkling little shimmery types of elements within the scene. And right now they're just kind of anemic. And, you know, th these pens are the way to go for that. Okay, maybe not that color right there, but really bright tones like this. And these are um, acrylic uh, paint pens, so they're nice and bright. I'll, I'll try to use some of my other ones as well. This one doesn't have quite the color selection. This one's more about the metallics. But these ones right here have a little bit of a higher um, um, pigment content, I guess, uh, than these ones. They point this one out in this set. But the thing is about this set is it's, I don't have a big range of values within this set here. So I'll probably be maybe using these two at most. And then these other ones right here from the other set um, to really bring in that life back into those trees that I'm going for there. So... Um, yeah, so hopefully that adds in a lot more kind of excitement into the scene. Um, right now, I think it looks, you know, it, it looks okay as this kind of element. If I was just, if I wasn't going to go with these pens, I would add in some more um, contrasting trees in here in black, like the, uh, like like I said earlier, the like the leafless limbs right over here, like this will be you know, a leafless deciduous tree or something like that. I would use this one in the background, which I still might do in here, okay? But I would create more textural contrasts in here, but I want to do it in a much more vivid kind of way with the pens. And then we'll add some of those tones down in here in blues and 
whites down in the water to really make that water shimmer. Now this one's look, see we have a little bit of this beige tone. This one's the white right here. So we can add a little bit of that, you know, that warm shimmer down here as well in the water, okay? And that's why, again, you know, I wasn't really worried about other types of things here. You can see if this stays focused in here, we have that shimmery type of touch with the water pattern stamp already going, but it'll just be so much more, uh, I don't know, well, shimmery with the paint pens in there. And then we have a gigantic set of some of the smaller ones as well, too. So, um, you know, I have every color and value of the rainbow right in this set right here. So that can be done in some real detailed areas in here. Again, I don't want to make this look busy, but that's where the white pigment ink will come into play. It mellows everything out towards the end. And hopefully everything comes together really well um, on this piece. Um, because I don't want to ruin it at this point. I'm just joking, people. That's what everyone, that, that people always worry about that type of thing. But I always say, hey, you know, by the time you come in with all of your other effects and stuff like that, if you use like white pigment ink, that can solve all things. And oftentimes my, it's my pens, my paint markers that solve everything for me. But I think, I don't know, that, that black pencil took care of a lot of my, you know, a lot of the issues in here. And it made certain areas look better too, but like this area in here was looking real muddy. But I can see like these two little outcroppings very much more distinctly. And you know, my shadow work in there got blended out with that, uh, you know, that uh, black pen too. So that that fixed that. So I don't know, I'm not having to do us, you know, through repair work, everything. So um, hello, Diane, I, I see you up there. Thanks for joining in. Uh, yeah, so okay, yeah, we're taking everyone out to dinner, uh, right, after this, right? What is this, like, beaver country up here? We're going out for, uh, 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 pancakes and maple syrup, you know, with these, it's like a maple tree in the background right here. <laughs> yeah. You need a beaver face doing a photo bomb. <laughs> Uh, can you have the beaver carrying a dead limb? Eh, maybe. I don't want to draw it in there, though, on this piece. But you could, though. That'd be kind of interesting. I'll have this, have him carrying it like this. Put that, you know, that would, that in his mouth. What you can do is you can have it like this, but only color this portion right here sometime. You know? You can mask off the thing and just cut that. and be like dragging, you know, this branch behind it. Or you put this like this, where it's got it in its mouth there and you only color this portion right here like that that'd be kind of interesting that'd be kind of interesting oh you know what I, I think i would do that with the larger beaver the larger beaver is kind of that same position like that and that's a good that's a good point i think you if you have it kind of dragging you know some branch like that where you know a lot of it looks like it's sticking out of you know kind of you know just kind of going along on the surface of the water that would be an interesting uh, type of thing to do there yeah um, so that's a good idea there, Froggy Fresh. Froggy Fresh is going to do that for us, you know. We'll, we'll, we'll be looking for that sample there on doing that. But yeah, that's a great idea, especially for something like this, huh? And tell me, one of these times too, one of the, I, I, I was thinking I need to do this where I do this beaver dam like this and like this, but it's got this little area down here and then you can just damp in a portion of this where like the water's coming over it like that. And that, you know, I mean, it'd be awesome if you can have that beaver going over to that area carrying a limb, you know, because they're going to go over to that little spillway kind of thing. And, you know, na nature's going to take over and they're going to feel kind of inclined to, uh, they're going to be compelled to, um, you know, fix that portion and dam it off. So, yeah. <laughs> Dinner via Zoom. Yeah. All right. So anyway, stay tuned for part two. Uh, I'll do that. I don't know. If, let me see. Maybe tomorrow or something like that. If it's not tomorrow, it'll be Sunday, but I really want to get to these other portions of it. I like doing this type of thing right here, but the thing that I really like doing, I like doing all this type of stuff on here. That's when I really have my fun on scenes. I love doing all that type of a little embellishment work and you know, creating those little kind of shimmery lighting types of effects and 
highlights and all those little things. I love that type of thing and putting all those little detailed work onto these pieces, you know. I'm all into details. That's why, you know, like designs like this, I love doing all those little tight details and everything like that. So when it comes to the applications of the stamps in scenes like that, I still like doing all that detailed work and whatnot. But um, yeah, I don't know. I guess with that black uh, colored pencil, I don't know, that was doing like detailed, I don't know, that, that's probably, I'm thinking about it right now, it's probably why I liked, I don't, I've used it before and it worked, but on this one it really helped out, you know, I guess it's detailed shadow work, right? Or something like that, I don't know. It solved a lot of problems too. Okay, so yeah, that and again, I need to add in something else right here too before I forget. I'm going to add in a few of these little elements like this with these rocks. Again, I'm having problems kind of zooming in here. Let me see if I can get that zoomed in a little bit like that. Yeah, God, I can't. My camera's having a hard time kind of focusing in on certain things these days in these live ones. Okay, here we go. So let me put some of these rocks down in this area. Okay, because it stands to reason that's not going to drop off like 10 feet or... Ah. All right, I'm just going to do it like out here. Ah, it's really hunting. I don't know, maybe my camera's like tired. <laughs> it's, only, it's only 1020 here. I don't know why it's tired. Uh, all right, I apologize, folks. I'm just going to do this right now. Okay, so I'm going to put this in these areas right back here in my shadow areas, okay. This is just some blue, okay. Uh, darker blue, because it's not gonna show up in here anyway. Um, if I do it in a light blue, okay. So this is kind of putting it down here, and this is kind of representing um, rocks that you can see underwater, okay. The clearer the water, the more... Ah, that is so totally out of focus. Sorry. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, I guess it. I guess we do need to call it a night here because my camera's going bonkers. Now it's, like, focused up here. Okay, let's see. I'll work on that before I get back here. I might have changed... Maybe I changed the setting or something like that. All right, so there's your kind of rocky textures down here. And again, that kind of works as um, like shadow work in here too, just like the um, the water texture stamp worked as kind of a toning device like that. All right. And I think that looks a little bit more... Um, depth... <laughs> It looks a little bit more rendered in terms of depth. Oh my gosh. I guess if it's real focused up here, I can bring it up here then like this here. Oh, okay, there. <laughs> I'll have to just do the entire uh, video of working like, you know, from uh, like a worm's eye view of it. It'll probably cause, like, eye fatigue for all of you, though. All right, so anyways, that is that. Stay tuned for part two. Hopefully not a blurry part two. I'll change my focusing parameters, you know, in my adjustment after that. But, okay, so anyways, thank you so much for joining in. Um, <sighs> Froggy Fresh, I don't know how to live YouTube. Mm. I'm using a certain software, but you can do, I don't know, I think there's a way where you can actually do a live stream off of your phone, too, or something like that. Um, oh, yeah, you can, we, do, we can do a Zoom, too. I can have a, a meeting, and uh, yeah, but then you would have to have some kind of, like, camera overlooking where you're doing that. But, uh, yeah. Now. Um, well, yeah, we'll figure that out sometime. Yeah, but we do need to have those um, live things sometimes. 
uh, in via Zoom. And if some of you don't want to Zoom, you can just turn off your camera. We, you know, okay, here we go. Why is that? Okay, this is driving me nuts. Okay, yeah, definitely, we need to stop. All right, thanks everyone. Uh, let's see. Thanks everyone for joining in. You on part two. Aim for Saturday, July 30th. Oh, yeah, yeah. So we'll do it tomorrow, uh, July 30th, probably around, I don't know, maybe 4.30 or 5 Pacific Standard Time. I know it gets real late, everyone, on Eastern Standard Time, especially if you're overseas. But, yeah, a lot of people on Eastern Standard, it gets real late. But... Uh, I'll try to figure this out with my camera. What's going on? It's driving me nuts. I don't know why. I don't know. Maybe it's heating up or something. Okay. So anyways, good night, everyone. And we'll see you on the next live stream. Thanks again.